Welcome back to RNS Real Nerd Shit Podcast. I'm Dylan. And I'm Evan. But yeah, Evan, so today, uh, no bullshit, time for more MCU. Yes. Like, last time we were talking about, like, pretentious fucking bullshit yeah, Japanese movies. what was that? Hunger Games bullshit. <laughs> we need no. to talk about superheroes. Superhero movies. As many superhero movies in one episode as possible. Oh, God, I'm so excited. Today, we're going to rank the MCU movies, Evan. We're going to rank them. And I thought it might be fun if we rank them. Of course, we discussed this prior. Evan. Did we? I don't remember this. No, actually, we didn't. I'm just breaking. Yeah. Everything Evan's about to say is off the cuff. Yeah, completely. exactly. <laughs> No, but um, we're going to rank them, and we're going to do our best to rank them and come to a consensus and, and have it be both of our lists kind of thing. Yeah, like, it, we aren't going to be giving off our own list. We're going to try to basically, uh, I don't know what's the word. Make like, a slightly more objective Like, list. curate curate Curating, a list. Yeah. yeah. Yes, like a fine curator. Yeah. That's I'm excited. Some, some kind of curating facility. We're like Reddit. We're like Reddit, but fucking way less epicer. Yeah, way less epicer than Reddit. We're not even getting any any karma for this. I know. Anyways, so I thought we might start by dividing them into three categories: the top five, the bottom five, and then everything else is in the middle category. So yeah, I was thinking we could start by, well, of course, if we just do our top fives each, and. We can agree on what belongs in the top five and the bottom five. And then that'll leave, of course, all the middle movies. And then we'll go about putting them in order within each category after. If that makes sense. To Sounds you. good. Does that make sense to you? It does make sense to me. You'll start at the bottom or the top. I feel like the top is easier. Maybe. Start at the top. Okay. Let's start at the top then. You want to go first? So you just want me... Should I say, like, my favorite five? Let's... Uh, since we can, we can kind of... I feel like it'll be easier. Just list one. I'll say if I agree. Because I have mine written down here too, so. Well, my favorite of all the MCU movies, my favorite is Captain America Civil War. Co-signed? Co-signed? That's your Co-s- number one? Well, no. Oh, okay, okay. We're not, we're not ranking them yet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just what belongs in each little category. Okay, you want me to keep going? Yes. So I'm okay. just, by me saying I agree, just that also belongs in the top okay. five for me. Okay, the first Avengers. Agree. Infinity War. Co-signed. Winter Soldier. Agree. And this one, I don't think you'll agree with it. Probably but not. I put the first Avenger in my top five. Oh. Shit. Don't co sign. I have Iron but Man. But, yeah, I'm about to say, I think it could get pushed off for Iron Man. I was just thinking. You're not that. super, like, hard on that one? Because, like, I don't know. When I was writing, writing that down, I didn't consider. I was like, oh, wait, Iron Man 1's a really good movie. <laughs> I think they both. I would lump Thor in there. Even though I've definitely seen Thor the least recently, but those three movies they're they're very similar. I think we'll get into the subject of solo movies a little bit more in the mid category yeah, uh-huh. of Gory, or even the uh, the lower one. But I feel like the emphasis phase, on the word mid, emphasis on the word <laughs> mid. But yeah, we'll get we'll get into solo movies a little more. But I feel like all the Phase One solo movies kind of they're elevated. Yeah, the I agree. Shit. So I think Captain America is not a terrible choice, but I definitely would put Iron Man over Captain. Yeah, I put a little note actually on First Avenger because we were t- talking about Phase 1. I feel like, you know, the Phase 1 movies they have more of a distinct style and I feel like First Avenger really kind of pops. Like, Joe, jo- Joe Johnson clearly has like that Rocketeer kind of vision put yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah. And that was the reason I had it on there. But yeah, there is Iron Man 1. Huh. Well, I guess we can... Since there's only one discrepancy, Evan, in the top five, let's return to that later. Okay. And I think we should both give a few little points about each of our movies, and then we'll agree on it. Because I'm not, even though Iron Man, well, I do have a, a good point for Iron Man, but we'll, we'll, I guess we can come back to it. Since it's yeah. only one, we'll come back to it. Bottom five. My, okay, the bottom five, I put Captain Marvel. Okay, I agree with that. Black Widow. Agree. Spider-Man Homecoming. Disagree. Doctor Strange. With the bottom five? Yeah. I thought Far From Home was your bottom one. I have both Spider-Man there. I didn't say my last one yet. You just listed six, didn't you? No, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Spider-Man Homecoming, Doctor Strange, that's four, and Spider-Man Far From Home is my very bottom. This one's bloody. Yeah. (laughs) This one's bloody. So for mine, I have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay. I have Captain Marvel as well. Mm -hmm. Far From Home, 
Black Widow and Endgame. And Endgame. <laughs> okay. Those are my five, Evan. I don't hate Endgame enough to put it in the bottom five. Fine, then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Well, let's talk about where we agree. Captain Marvel, so Black I'm gonna Widow, put, I'm gonna put a little check and Far From here Home. So I can keep track. Captain Marvel, Far From Home, and Black Widow are all... We both agree those belong in the bottom five. Yeah. You don't think Ant-Man and Wasp should, should be there? I have a soft spot in my heart for the Ant-Man movies. Ant-Man and Wasp isn't great, but I mean... Just a huge Peyton Reed fan? Yeah, I, I really love Peyton Reed. I liked his oh, episode. Have... I really, really liked his episode, The Mandalorian. Oh, yeah, sick. That was really good. Didn't he actually direct a good one? I have no idea. I didn't watch The Mandalorian. I don't know. I was trying to go with the joke. You didn't watch any Mandalorian? No, I didn't. I thought you did for some reason. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, anyways. At that point, I was already kind of like, man, I really don't like Star Wars. <laughs> I just didn't watch. True, true. That's kind of how I'm feeling about the Disney Plus Marvel yeah. series right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess we disagree on Ant Man and Endgame, and you have Homecoming, and what is the other one you have? Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Do you want to just we can make this quick and easy, Evan? You can have one. I'll have one. I think that's that's what we should do here. I feel like as much as I don't like Doctor Strange, it's been a long time since I've seen it, and I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt and, I think and I'll, push it out. I'll get rid of Endgame. Homecoming is dog shit though. Wait, so. No, Homecoming... Wait, 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 wait. I'm saying we keep... I'll get rid of Doc and Strange. We keep Homecoming in there. So I'll replace Endgame with Homecoming then. So you want to pu- push out Endgame? Yes. Wait, okay. do I? No, Ant-Man, I guess. Ant-Man, okay. Yeah, we should keep Homecoming. Well, actually, which one? Just because... Whatever. I'm willing to put Endgame in the bottom five. Would you... Do, which one do you think actually legitimately... Since we're just doing a compromise The here, thing is... The thing about Endgame is, even though I don't think it's the worst of the worst, there is the point where it's it just extremely disappointing, and I feel like that is enough to qualify it to be in the bottom five. Okay, the so point that it does not live up to what it was supposed to be at all, I feel like that's enough to put it in the bottom five. So I'll replace Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah, let's put Homecoming. And Ant-Man and the Wasp will be in mid. Yeah. I, well, I think home, Homecoming for us and Ant-Man and the Wasp. See, I don't agree with that at all. God, Ant-Man and the Wasp is bad. But, at the same time, there's a lot less writing on Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's kind of like Endgame, too. Is like Homecoming is more... There's that weight on it because it's a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. And it's worse. But Ant-Man is like, it's bad, but it's like, eh, you know. I thought it was fun, you know. It was cool when he turned giant in the water or whatever. I was like, oh, it's a little fun moment. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a little... <laughs> little cute moment. It was a big fun moment. Uh, how about that? Get it. I get it. All right, so bottom five, Homecoming and Endgame are pretty controversial to have in the bottom five. Yeah, a brown table going to be like, I love Homecoming. <laughs> How dare you put it in your fucking bottom five? <laughs> Making enemies in the first 15 minutes. I don't know about that. All right, so we're locked in. We're locked in. And the, then for the, the, joke, the joke is that I was spamming the beginning of a... <laughs> Yeah, thank God. <laughs> of a uh, brown tables far from home video, I was spamming the beginning where he was like, "I love Spider Man Homecoming" or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you know what? They're probably gonna. None of you would know what I'm talking about. Who cares? I don't know how you can. Ha- well, probably they. Maybe some of them do. Some, some one of you do. But it, it basically, yeah, it's a far from home review by this um, handsome young fellow. And uh, why do you feel the need to? Talk about how you love Homecoming at the beginning of why it. Why do you even like So it? people don't get mad at if you. If you don't like Far From Home, why do you even like Homecoming? It doesn't make any sense. They're the both, only difference yeah. between those two movies is that Iron Man isn't in one of them alive. And Vulture is like decent. Whereas, Vulture is good. Yeah, whereas Mysterio was terrible. Vulture is good. This man put Homecoming in the bottom. Okay. So do you want to quickly discuss what we just generally have in the midsection now? Well, that's like... How many, okay, so that's, what, 17 other movies? Pretty much. All the Thor movies, you know. Yeah. Age of Ultron. I gotta take Homecoming out of there, Evan. How about that? Doctor Strange. And Ant-Man and the Wasp are in there now, too. Both the Guardians movies. Hulk. Yeah, so basically all the other... The, yeah, both the Guardians movies. All the other shit is in there. 
So what do you want to start organizing first? Should we just go from top to bottom? I think maybe we should go bottom. To the top? To the top. Okay. Okay. So what do you think is the worst MCU movie? What needs to be at the bottom? I think I'll have an easier time starting at the best one. Sorry, this is confusing. The best of the worst. The best worst movie, I think, is Homecoming. Um, Personally. I think Captain Marvel is better than Homecoming, honestly. Oh, man, Evan. I mean, Captain Marvel... It's, it's not terrible. It's just such a nothing movie. Whereas I feel like Homecoming is actually like really bad. Like You know what's cool about It's Homecoming? badly written. Spider-Man suit looks stupid. Well, we just... We, did we not just agree on Vulture is pretty cool? Well, Vulture was... I mean, I, it has that, but I feel like everything else... What does win. Captain Marvel have? It doesn't have much. Well, Jude Law was pretty terrible in it. There's no good villain. There's no good hero. Nick Fury is, like, retroactively ruined. What is good about Captain Marvel that it belongs above? I Marvel? did not say it was good. I said it was a nothing movie. There must be something good about it if it's better than Spider-Man. Um, when it played Nirvana, that was cool. That's a lie. <laughs> You're lying. Her, uh... N- her Nine Inch Nails t-shirt I'm that has a, when it rains. the Nine Inch Nails t-shirt that had the newer logo that wasn't from the 90s. <laughs> that, that was really cool. You know what? You're right. Better than Homecoming. Yeah. All right. I mean, whatever. Okay. Well, how about Homecoming is the second best worst one? Then I'm willing to settle for that. Okay, cool. So Captain Marvel above Homecoming. At the end of the, if we're going to have to read it, like, from the top down to make our list less confusing. <laughs> but, yeah, so just again. Like, what's 1 to 27? Right now, we are in the bottom five. The worst yeah. five, and I'm arguing, I was arguing that Spider-Man was better than Captain Marvel. For some reason, it's not. <laughs> so, we'll just, we'll put that in the second worst one. Okay. And then below that, what do you think? Well, we're keeping, okay, so, d- we got rid of... Doctor Strange in the bottom five? Doctor Strange is not in the bottom five. Okay. So the bottom five I think we agreed on is Captain Marvel, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, Black Widow, and Endgame. Okay. Oh, Uh, wow. Wait, hold on. I think Black Widow is better than Captain Marvel. Really? Maybe. They're the same movie. Also, Nick Fury doesn't get ruined in Black Widow. That's true. Well, Florence Pugh was decent in... Black Widow also, I did like her in and it. And Red Guardian was funny, but he didn't do anything. Well, yeah, he was he's funny in, like, two scenes. Yeah. I don't know. Don't think about that, Evan. But I felt like the ending battle went to, like, so just not good. Them so flying in the air. Marvel, and Taskmaster, that was... Taskmaster looked stupid. They and then waste Taskmaster. And then it was a stupid twist that, oh, her... Somehow his daughter lived in that explosion. She blowed up the girl. Yeah. And somehow she's still alive. Black Widow blowed up the girl and she's evil. She literally blowed her blowed her up. Yeah, there's a lot of um I heard people comparing it to the Winter Soldier. Very similar to the Winter Soldier. I guess so, yeah. But not good. Like down to the little cloth face mask thing. The little cybernetic cloth face mask. Oh, did that happen in Winter Soldier? Yeah. In yeah, which it part? Does. At the end. The end. Black Widow uses it too. She's the senator. Sorry, my I I try to to block out these movies as much as possible, <laughs> but some for some reason I and keep also, talking like, about them. The big floating military spaceship yes, thing. Yes, that crashes. yeah, the helicarrier. It's a big action sequence. So what do you think of it? Black Widow placement? And yeah, I guess Taskmaster is literally the same as the Winter Soldier, being yeah. sent out to like assassinate. We're just set up in the same movie. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Damn, that's crazy. But Winter Soldier is a better movie. Of course, yeah, yeah. Much, much um, better, but... I guess I could say Black... Well, Black Widow, it has some points in favor of it. So I guess we could put that at the top. I think I'd... So that would be number 23. Something like that. Yeah. And then I'd put Captain Marvel under it, and then Homecoming. Okay, okay. That feels a little bit better to me. So that leaves us with Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home. All right, so what do you... I, I feel like you're going to say Far From Home was your worst movie, right? Yeah. I might as well agree with you. I don't really... Honestly, for these two... It's interchangeable. I don't really give a shit. Which one would I rather watch? Which one's shorter? Well, yeah, that's the thing, though. Far From Home is shorter. But ultimately, if it's like you had to watch... You have to watch the first 30 minutes of either one. Don't care. 
I would pick Endgame, honestly. Let's put Endgame above Far From Home. I'll, I'll agree with you that Far From Home, Far From Home is the worst one. Because like I said, I do enjoy Endgame to some degree, but I'm willing to put it in the bottom five just because, like we said, it's just so massively disappointing. And like, and it's a terrible finale for all the characters. Listen to our Endgame podcast <laughs> if you. I don't. I don't have to go all over it again. Yeah, just listen to the Endgame podcast. Well, if, you guys, if you want to hear that discussion for two hours. Yeah, there you go. Go listen to that one. But, and then um, come back to this. What was I going to say? Also, we didn't mention this while we were recording, but we mentioned this before. We're trying to assess the movie as a solo movie, which in the MCU generally is hard to do. But, uh, yeah, Endgame is a solo movie. Obviously, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But no matter whether you like Endgame or not, you re- obviously know that like you can't watch that movie and not see an MCU movie before that. Yeah. It's impossible. It's impossible. I remember my my friend's grand grandpa like saw Infinity War and he was like, Yeah, it's good. <laughs> like, just completely lying. To, like t- as like the only MCU movie he saw. Should we talk about why we have Far From Home on the very bottom? Yeah, we should. Okay, we so should. what do you what do you have to say about it? I think I know exactly what you're gonna say about it, and I think I agree. Okay. That it's just a dog shit version of Sam Raimi's Spider Man Two. Pretty much. And um, where he can't decide if he wants to be Spider Man or if he wants and to also, deal with a personal like, life. Man, you were just fucking groveling at Tony Stark's feet for an entire movie, talking about I need to be a superhero, please. Yeah. I'm fucking. I'm. I mean, I understand like you die in a cosmic fight or whatever. You want to take a break, but that's not how they play it. They play it like he's like, oh, I just want to go on vacation. Like, they don't play it like he's, like, some tortured person or anything. Like Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yeah. Like a good movie. Like, you play it like, I'm bored. I want yeah, to it's really, it It doesn't feel, like, real. It's not substantial yeah. in any uh-huh. way. It's barely even a through line in the movie. It's um, it's very half-assed version of the Spider-Man 2 story. Yeah, and I guess we can also just talk about how Spider-Man in it is, like, really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, like, just... Almost well, murder, murdering his classmates uh, on the on the bus. I hate that so much. That scene is... That's the worst scene in any Spider-Man movie, in my opinion. Personally... Him, when he almost murders his classmates on the bus with the glasses. I think it is very stupid. And also the entire... The entire... Really, the plot of the movie hinges around these fucking glasses. Yeah, I'm gonna say, on top of the stupid thing, when he gives this guy he just met... The glasses from Tony Stark. And it's like, you know what? You deserve these more than I do. But I think I think that works. That works in a story way, just because it's like, okay, um, that's dumb that he would ever give that up to somebody. But it just it really just represents, in a sense, like he's shirking his responsibility, which is fine. But the, it all boils down to these glasses are. A very stupid idea like you can have you can have a bunch of different things that could represent him passing the responsibility how is tony stark to allowed to have have made the glasses this is like having your own how army of drones them, missiles what the? how is he allowed to give them to a minor how is, is that he, yes like, that's another thing it doesn't make any sense for tony stark also, to have given he didn't need these drones ever not not even that he just didn't use them and it's like, oh, we didn't see him. He didn't need them. He has 500 Iron Man suits that can do the same thing. And he doesn't have to wear glasses. He could just say, go yeah. attack the Capitol building. I don't care. <laughs> go attack. Yeah, so. Anyways, the whole movie just, it falls apart in a lot of ways. And I do, I will say. The CGI is really terrible. I do like. That's a point against it, too. The CGI I, is I terrible. I hate Spider-Man's but... CGI suit. Yeah. And then the Iron, um, Iron Spider suit looks really bad. At the beginning of the movie. I think the Iron Spider doesn't look too bad, but I think it's an ugly design. Yeah. Uh, the, I think, well, just for the sheer fact of metal CGI looks better. Or like metal-ish, whatever it is. Yeah. Metal CGI looks better than cloth. Cloth like, CGI. Whatever it is, yeah. But in general, yeah, the, the CGI suits look like shit. Um, and but, then the final battle is really bad. Just the Spider-Man just fighting Black, drones. It's the same as Black Widow. Yeah. It's the same fight. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. They, they keep doing that where they even admit this at Marvel is that they they do the previs they call it mm-hmm. in the biz Evan the, the previs and they basically make the entire ending 
before they sh- hire a director. That's real. They that is that. real. They do that. That's why they all feel the same. They're all bad. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's really bad. I do want to say real quick, I do like the MJ Peter stuff in this movie a little bit. I don't like it because I'm sorry. that's another point <laughs> against it for me. I don't like it because their relationship just makes no sense to me. It comes you out of nowhere, but in the movie, it plays fine to me. Because, like, there wasn't really much of an... Attr- like, I guess she was interested in him in the last movie, in Homecoming. But in this one, it doesn't feel like... It just comes out of nowhere. And then you don't get why they like each other at all. I kind of like it, but it's just because... I think it was a very, um... Yeah, it's cute, I guess. But, like I said, the relationship itself doesn't make any sense to me. They don't give us any reason why these people like each other. I mean, I think they said... They just fork together. They set it up okay in Homecoming. But I just think it's... There's just more personality. At the very least, it's better than Liz. I don't know if I agree with that. Liz is nothing. You can't not agree with me. It made more sense in that one because, like... It made more sense in that one because, like, um... I It feels like Liz was supposed to be, like, you know, like... Like your first have, crush? Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, like... Oh, the really popular girl that everybody likes at school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for just for that reason, he wanted to go out with her. It kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? And she was really smart, all that. I feel like MJ is supposed to be like the more down-to-earth girl. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But they don't do anything with that. They don't make these two characters relate to each other at all. Yeah. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, sure. I feel like the reasons he liked Liz were kind of superficial. Whereas with MJ, it's supposed to be like more of a real thing. And then... They don't tell us how it's more real or make it make kinda, sense at all. You get what I mean, yeah, though? Kind of. Kind of. I don't want to spend too much time on MCU Spider-Man, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of other movies. But I just wanted to say in general, I just I liked her personality better than Liz. Like, I just enjoyed that more, and I just like... It was okay. I loved okay, it. No, it I loved bad. it. It was bad. <laughs> bad movie. Well, real, we didn't even talk about... Okay, really, really quick. I'm agreeing with Evan that this is the worst MCU movie. Mysterio's my favorite supervillain. Like, maybe not my favorite one. He's definitely my favorite Spider-Man villain. Yeah. And it's just it just baffles me that I could find no enjoyment in that fucking movie. They made him another Iron Man villain. Yeah, they did. They did. And that's Iron another Boy point. Jr. Another point in the, in a, against it, as far as the writing goes, is just that, again, they just rely on Iron Man. Yeah. They're going to keep doing that, too. Probably. Just we'll see what late. happens in the just next one. Late. I'm sure. What what have we talked about before? Like, uh, oh, I guess Chameleon. We were saying, or every, multiple people were saying, like the scrolls and shit. But there was other stuff that, like, they're definitely gonna shirk off other supervillains on Iron Man. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was saying like, oh, Chameleon. He'll probably use like scroll DNA or something like that. That's not really related Remember to Tony invisible? Stark. But I see what you're saying. It's like they just try to bring one villain's backstory related to something else in the MCU. That would yeah. be better than Tony Stark, though. Yeah, that would be better, because everything's Tony Stark. But I was going to say, like, in Homecoming, remember the Invisible Jet? Yeah, A yeah. hunk of the Invisible Jet falls in his yard, chameleon, and he makes, he turns it into a suit. <laughs> the, the Invisible... Uh, that could be a thing. Line. That could be a thing, be actually, dope. yeah. That'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be really cool. <laughs> All right, so I guess we have it, right? Bottom five? Yeah, bottom five. Black Widow, Captain Marvel, Homecoming, Endgame, and Far From Home. Yes. In that order. Mm-hmm. This is going to take a minute. The middle. The middle? Well, we can start with what's at the top of the middle. Yes, we can. Do you want to do that? Well, yes, we can. So out of all of these these films, Evan, what is your favorite? Well, I'm going to say, starting at the top of the middle, it's going to have to be either First Avenger or Iron Man. Uh, we should probably sort that out. Yeah. We should probably sort that out. And then we'll organize the top tier, okay? Yeah. So which one... Which one are we pulling down into mid tier? I'm willing to put down First Avenger, First even Avenger. though I really do like it. You know, Iron Man was kind of the foundation for everything, so you kind of had to have it there. Well, I'll put, let's let's just start off Cap then, and yeah, just because I like it too, and whatever he's a, he's the top of mid tier. Yeah. Okay. Captain America, writing it down. So who belongs under Cap? Maybe the first Guardians. I was gonna agree with you. I was, I was gonna, gonna say that too. Okay, Guardians. Guardians is pretty good. It is pretty good. All right, Evan. Now next, it's got to be Doctor Strange. No. <laughs> Doctor Strange is at the bottom of it. <laughs> hmm. 
Maybe maybe Thor one. I don't know how much you like Thor one. You're not gonna like the next two I say. After Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. What do you think? You're not gonna like it. Well, let me hear what you have to and say. And neither will our polite audience. What do you have to say? Are you gonna say Iron Man two and three? No, I'm gonna say. Age of Ultron. No, that's way too high for Age of Ultron. And Thor three. Ragnarok? Mm. No. Yeah. Thor 1 is better than Ragnarok. Well, you're a fucking pansy. Okay. <laughs> well, most people... No, I think most people will agree with you that Ragnarok is better than Thor 1. Yeah. It's way more popular. Yeah, it's a pretty popular opinion. So, yeah, what do you what do you think for Guardians? you think Thor 1? After... Well, we need to we need, we need to agree. Humbly agree well, on we, this. We agree on Cat. We agree on Guardians. So what do you think, Thor 1? Maybe. I think... Thor 1 is fine. Yeah, so Thor 1 and then Ragnarok? I don't know about that because I don't really like Ragnarok that much. This dude likes fucking um, Thor, the Red Infinity Stone one. The Dark World? Yeah, you like that one better than Thor. I do like Dark World more than I like... um, Why? Why? Because Ragnarok is like... You know, I liked the vibe they had going for the first two Thor movies. It actually felt like, you know, like some... Like... I don't want to say Lord of the Rings, but you know what I mean? They had, like, that fantasy-type vibe. Then they made Thor Ragnarok just be Guardians of the Galaxy, except in Asgard. Well, not Asgard, but... A.K.A. dope. A.K.A. awesome. I don't like that they just changed it to cater to the new audience MCU had after Guardians of the Galaxy. I feel like trying way too hard to do that. And Taika Waititi, I mean, he's okay, but, you know, he's just... He's just a James Gunn-type dude, you know what I mean? He's not really... They're not similar, the two people. But you get what I'm once saying by that. Once they're put through the studio filter... You get what I mean? Yeah. Or it could have even been... They're Marvel the two people like, that Marvel has where they're like, oh, look, these two clearly have a distinct style slash vision, even though it's not at all. They have the same You're making the style. same thing. Yeah, but you get what I mean? Yeah. They're the two that people look at, like, oh, these are the directors we really like in the MCU. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah... I feel like, yeah, with Ragnarok, they really just tried too hard to do the Guardian thing, and that's why I don't like it that much. Whereas I feel like Thor 1 and 2, it, you know, people say they're boring or whatever, but I at least... Thor it, 1 is definitely not boring. I like Thor 1. Thor 2 is boring as fuck. And you know what? I like those characters also. I do like them, like... Says the man who refuses to watch Loki. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no... I didn't mean you. Know, well, Loki, he's okay. I liked him in Thor one. Loki was cool in Thor one. Yeah. Yeah. He's cool in Avengers one. I don't really remember what he does in Dark World. Oh yeah, Dark World. He like they teamed up. Yeah, that was cool. Actually, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, it was. No. What part is it is cool? Um, I like when he <laughs> pretended to die or whatever. Yeah, that was a cool part. That's. I don't like Loki. <laughs> I don't like Loki. It was, I like the ending where he, he talks to Odin and it turns out it was Loki. They were setting up Ragnarok like years before. Cause Ragnarok didn't come out for a while after, right? I don't think they knew what they were setting up, but yeah. They must have. No. <laughs> Give it some credit. No, there's no way. I mean, they were just like, oh, we'll maybe do this later. Okay, so right now in the middle, we have First Avenger, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Thor 1. Yeah. Okay. And then Doctor Strange. No. <laughs> Honestly, after that, I think I might say... Black Panther. After Thor? Yeah, maybe. I would definitely say Thor 3 over any of these movies. Maybe Guardians 2. I don't know. I feel like you have to give... At least, you know, Black Panther, it had Killmonger. All the Wakanda stuff, you know, it felt like... um, What's it called? Phantom Menace, like the ending battle. It was literally the the final (laughs) battle from Phantom Menace, but... And there isn't a lot of focus on Black Panther in his own movie, which I didn't like. I know some people like preferring that they do kind of like that as more of a, I don't know if it's a Wakanda movie, but you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people do like that, but I would have preferred that it had more focus on Black Panther. Me too. Um, that's one reason that I don't particularly like team up movies in general. I like, uh, I like a bit of a character piece. Even though we do both like Civil War, we'll get to it. <laughs> that's true. That is a solid movie though, but I know, I know, but it's. Kind of a, but I I, de- I actually really agree with you. That's something I didn't think about too much. Is that that is one reason I actually don't like Black Panther that much. Is just it doesn't focus. there's a lot going on it and doesn't focus on him, him a lot. Yeah. yeah, 
But I did like Killmonger a lot in it. He's one of my favorite I MCU like villains. He's claw. He's claw. No, he sucks. His death is awesome. How does he die? I don't remember. Killmonger fucking kills him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That was, okay, yeah. yeah that, awesome. that was cool. You're right, you're right. And he kills his well, girlfriend. Honestly, that was crazy. Yeah. Okay, now I know exactly what you're talking about. That was crazy. Uh, Black Panther can go up there. He can go up there. <laughs> that scene was crazy. Um, Killmonger was awesome in that movie. Yeah, he was. He was that was because that shit went brutal. Where yeah, he's like, oh, I'm going to take your lady. He just killed both of them. That, that was, was insane. There moments where I was like kind of shocked that it yeah. was a movie. I agree, I agree. Yeah, yeah all the scenes with Killmonger were really good. Fucking, my opinion. what's his name? Martin Short or something? What's his oh, name? Oh, he sucked in The British guy. Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, I think. It's Martin something. The white guy. That, the reason I'm saying that sucks is because, like, they really had to go out of their way to be like, let's put this white guy in it, a fish out of water. T-. Here's how, here's how you fucking Americans can yeah. understand Wakanda. Exactly. We, was, don't, we did not need that character. Exactly, no. Give me an extra scene of... Uh, it's really fucked up. Like, why do you need, oh, we need a white dude, a fish out of water to be the surrogate for the white... Uh, what you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, I we can just enjoy the Black Panther story. That was him. actually just dis- like distinctly like distracting to me the first time I saw it because I was like, they really need to give this dude a fucking arcade game to play while they're like having the story yeah. uh, somewhere else. You remember the part I'm talking about? Yes. Like during the climax, he has to fly the ship. I don't need this. <laughs> uh, completely manufactured, completely yeah. divorced from everything else. You Do you know? think he'll be in the sequel? Hope not. Hope not. <laughs> well, actually, I don't give a shit because the fuck. The <laughs> but do you think fucked. he'll be in it? Well, yeah, because no Chadwick. Maybe and... it'll be like it'll be like this. He's the only white guy in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Is Namor cool. not white? No, he's. From Do we know who's playing no- Namor? He's from the ocean. I guess it's not official. It's yet. Jason Momoa. No. Oh yes. Okay. He yeah. breached his contract. <laughs> Okay, so, I don't know. So, you want to put Ragnarok, I want to put Black Panther. No, but, okay, I, I'll, I'll co-sign Black Panther, Thor Black Panther. Okay, okay. I'll do that. Okay, I guess. I sold myself on the killing uh, Ulysses Claw part. That's cool. <laughs> I don't like Ragnarok, but, well, you, you tell us what you like about Ragnarok, and I'll be like, maybe I'm willing to concede to some You don't want to hear my other choices, so. You don't want to hear my other choices. Well, let's talk about Ragnarok first. We'll get to the other choices. Ragnarok, Thor, Ragnarok. I'll try and sell you here, Evan. Okay. I'll try and sell you. Let me think. There's some points I think I could concede on. The opening of Thor, Ragnarok is... It did have a cool opening. It's like... there. I really appreciate some of the... um When you get to see, like, an Iron Man 1, the opening fight, his escape from the cave and shit. I just really appreciate being able to see the hero just do their thing on their own. Yeah, I do like that. It's I a agree. really cool Thor fight scene. I agree. And Len Zeppelin. <laughs> Freaking sweet, bro. Um... What else in Ragnarok is cool? Nothing. No, that's cool. Okay. I mean, I guess, you know, like, for some reason, this scene always sticks in my head, so Hell I is, guess I must have thought it. I'm sorry, real quick. Hell is hot. Well, Kate Blanchett, she's awesome. So, yeah, you're right. She is pretty hot. No. She is hot, yeah. Go ahead. I agree. That is a point in his favor. It's one of the very few times in the Marvel movies where it's like, damn, that girl's pretty hot. <laughs> they're like, And they're, like, letting you breathe it in. Yeah. Um, for some reason, this scene, this is stupid. Uh, this always sticks in my mind. If when he throws that ball at, like, the window, <laughs> and it bounces back and hits him in the head. That's I always thought funny. that was funny. It's kind of funny. Um, I, I The fight the, with him and Hulk was cool. I like the fight with him and Hulk. I also like the fight with him and Hela at the end. Yeah. It's pretty good. I don't remember much about it, so maybe that doesn't say too much she in his favor. Eye. She rips out his eye. And, like it comes back, and it comes back in a movie later. Yeah, but they make no consequences joke. in the MCU. They make a joke about pink eye though, so it's okay. Okay, yeah, you're right. He gets pink eye. Yeah. Okay. But I like the part. Wait, doesn't he get? Does he still have like a brown eye? Because you know how it's a fake glass eye, so yeah, it's brown. And then just looks normal later. Does he have the same At first, it's like gold, right? And then it turns like brown. I Which think. Something. But anyways, back to Thor Ragnarok. I do like when she destroys Mjolnir. That whole scene with Odin looks like shit, though. Again, right? another thing that didn't last, though. What? Because he gets it back. He what, gets his hammer? eye back, he gets the hammer back. Well, that's Endgame's fault. That's Endgame's fault. Yeah, We're talking and, about Thor and Ragnarok. The, the eye is Infinity War's fault. I'm just saying. We're talking about Thor Ragnarok. I know, I know. Okay? So, I like him getting fucked up by Hela. I like the, the meeting with Odin, even though, like, there was that... I don't know if you remember this at the time, but, you know, we always follow the MCU news... And originally, Odin was going to be a homeless person in New York. Did they get rid of that? Were they like... They kept the scene, but they they reshot some stuff, but they kept most of it and just fucking 
chroma keyed them out into a field. That's why it looks so generic. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, um, oh, God, that's bad. I know. And it looks like shit, but I like the scene. <laughs> but I, in general, I like the scene of him talking to Loki. Do you like the scene with Doctor Strange? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, it was actually kind of funny when Loki was like, I was falling for like... I was falling for 40 million seconds. Yeah. That, that was okay. That's not even the part I like. Which, do you like the... Does he have the gloves on in it? No. He okay. Yeah, he does. He does? Okay. I don't remember. The comic book accurate yellow gloves, for those of you out of the know. Which is all of you. Which is all of you. <laughs> Come here, and we'll tell you about the real nerd shit. No, but I like that scene, because he's kind of just... I like how he's just talking down to Thor. I like how he's just like, you gotta get out of here. Yeah. You gotta get out of here now. That was fine. That was I like fine. that. And I like... I think Thor, like, destroys his house. I think I can agree that it just does have some of the best uh, action scenes in the MCU. It's pretty good action scenes. Yeah. yeah. So, for that, everything else, I don't know if I agree with so much. It made me laugh a few times. Well, I didn't say it was hilarious, did I? No, I'm saying no, I'm saying that. I'm giving it a point. I'm like, it made me laugh a, a few times. Oh, okay, okay. But, like, outside of that, it's like, I don't really know. I don't like his haircut. That's one thing I, mean, I don't like. So you prefer him with the long hair? Yeah. He's fucking Thor. Yeah, I agree. Of course I prefer him. Do I prefer Iron Man in a wood helmet? No. <laughs> I prefer Thor to look like Thor. Get ready. Get ready to get triggered. Because Thor's going to be a girl. Oh. Well, the show have long hair. Oh, wait. No, I like it. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, we're, we're straight. So what do you think about Ragnarok, Evan? Did I sell you enough on it? Or are you not sold? Does Age of Ultron take its place? No, Age of Ultron is worse. <laughs> I I can say Ragnarok is better than Age of Ultron. What do you got, Evan? What do you got? Well, you think Age of Ultron should go next? No, I'm joking. Okay, okay. After that, I don't know. You're, I know you're at this point, it's like you're getting into the... You're probably looking at Thor 2, aren't you? Honestly, I wasn't. I was looking at another part 2, though. I'm thinking maybe Guardians 2. Guardians 2 is pretty good. Yeah. Guardians 2 is pretty good. Honestly, Guardians 2 over Ragnarok... I don't know. What do you think? Actually, yeah, Guardians Two is better. Yeah. Than Thor Three, but I don't know about Thor Two. We can we can decide on Thor Two later. Okay. But okay, I think we should put Guardians Two over Ragnarok. Okay, you I can agree? agree. I can agree. Black Panther than Guardians Two. That's that sounds good to me. Yeah. Can Guardian Two? What do I like about Guardians Two? I think I can speak to Guardians Two. Real quick. I, I like the part that always sticks to me is that I think he has the best death in the MCU. Yondu. Y- yeah, Yondu. Um, and as far as we know, it's been permanent. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, James Gunn said, and of course, they'll rip his toys out of out of James Gunn's hands eventually, where they'll just, you know, bypass his yeah. shit. Yeah. But, um, you know, James Gunn said, like, he's like, yeah, no, he's, he's dead forever. Yeah. There's no way. I liked Yon doing it. That it, it was actually, you know, it, it felt, gen- it was like a genuine heart, heartfelt moment when uh, he's like, that may be your father, but he ain't your daddy. And he was a genuinely good, um, and of course, you know, I relate to that line oh. <laughs> very deeply, but we'll talk about that another day. We'll talk about that on the therapy episode. But I really like, and I know we're supposed to be, you know, fuck our own rules, whatever. We're supposed to be comparing these like uh, as solo movies, but I do really like about Guardians 2 how it super pays off the cliffhanger at the end of the first movie. You remember the cliffhanger that the Guardians Him one? dancing to I Want You Back by the Jackson that is, 5? Evan, that is called... Uh, uh, or was it I Want You Back or ABC? Traditionally. Wait, who? Who dancing to Groot. It? Baby Groot. No. Was it I Want You Back or was it ABC? I need to know right now. I don't care. It was a Jackson 5 song. One of the two popular ones. I'm sure it was. It was. I'm sure it was. But I mean the cliffhanger, not the like fucking mm-hmm. Groot part, but the kind of the, the cliffhanger part where you like... Cragland, famous character actor, um, what's his name, Sean Gunn? Sean Gunn. Uh, yeah, Sean Gunn and Yondu are talking, and he's like, you were supposed to take him to his paw, That's, why don't we do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I, you're I, right. Yeah. I remember seeing that in the theater, and I was like, that probably will never go anywhere. And then it does, and yeah. that's what the second movie's about. It explores that in depth, and then the Yondu thing is a huge payoff for that. Yeah. Where it like turns it around and was like, oh, Yondu was the good guy the whole time. Actually, yeah, I think that's... Since we, I kind of brought that up with Yondu, I feel like all the character interactions, it's just the character writing in general in Guardian 2 was actually pretty on point. Yeah. It all great. felt really natural, I guess. I don't know if that's the pretty word I should use. Pretty organic for yeah. like a, 
a superhero space blockbuster. Yeah, like um, I like Mantis too. It felt really you know, down to earth. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, all the moments with Drax, Mantis, they're corny, but they're corny a little bit well, cheesy. But I did, I like them. They're two deeply <laughs> simple-minded people. They're not stupid, but they're both very like they're simple. Yeah, they're both very one-sided. Yeah. Um, so it's a very simple kind of comedy, but it works. Yeah, it made sense. And they're fun characters to be with. The only one I didn't like so much was Nebula and Gamora. Because at a certain point, I remember, like, okay, this is getting dumb. Like, Nebula chasing down Gamora. One of my least Being overly you, violent. Can I, was I tell like, you, Evan? Can yeah, tell you? yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This does go exactly with what you're saying, though. One of my least favorite scenes or, or shots in the entire MCU... Is in this movie in Guardians Two. Was it like when they blow up the ship or whatever? No, it's when when what you're talking about when Nebula and Gamora are fighting, and that's I feel like that subplot could be just cut from the movie. I don't think it's really worth very much, or at least like I don't know, I don't like it. But anyways, the shot that I hate so much in this movie is one of my least favorite MCU shots ever. Is when Gamora is is I think Nebula's hiding behind a shield, um, like a windscreen from a ship or something. That's like, um, or she's hiding behind something, and Gamora has a giant, like, turret from a ship. It's like f- eight times the size. Yes, of I her. think if I'm, what I'm talking about, I don't. For some reason, I'm thinking like, does the ship blow up or something? Like, do they crash? I the think ship? they're in the wreckage and they're fighting. Okay, the something like that, something. right? Yeah, uh huh. And she's. It's yeah, been a while since I've seen. She this just movie. has the gun on, and it's just firing, and she's holding. It, it looks. It looks like a seven-year-old holding a fridge, <laughs> and it just looks so stupid. Uh, and she's just screaming. Yeah. Um, I, I remember she was yelling so much. Oh, my God. I hate that. That's part. what I'm saying. At a certain point for me, I was like, this is too much. Just Nebula chasing down Gamora. <laughs> and I don't even know why. It's like, why does she hate her with that much passion? Not enough time to devote to them. And it, and it just it comes off very melodramatic because there's no... Yeah. No but I guess time. I like when they come together by the end. That's cool. It's fine. Yeah. I don't um, mind Nebula being part of the Guardians. It makes sense. Yeah. And she's cool, I guess. She's cool. Yeah. But I really like... I think Ego is great. Peter's great. All the Guardians are great. And I, it has actually one of my other favorite MCU fight sequences. One more thing. One more thing. Go ahead. Before you get to that, though. Jump back on the character thing. I did also think there were some funny moments with Rocket, Groot, and Yondu together. Kind of. That's kind of yeah. what I was about to mention, too. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, well, of course, that one bit goes on a little too long. Where, where they're like their faces or they're going like light speed. No, that doesn't even go on too long. Okay. It's like a few seconds. But I'm talking about the bit where Groot comes back with the wrong thing a hundred times. Oh, yes, yes. That yes. goes on for a while. Yeah. That goes on for a little too long. After that part, when they, you know, because the group, they're getting baby Groot to kind of orchestrate their escape. Mm-hmm. It's very silly. He's he's not helping them out in the correct way. But then he brings the right thing or whatever. They get out. Yondu's able to get his weapon back. And then that fight scene after he gets his shit back. And they kill every pirate on the ship. It's fucking awesome. It was cool. Yeah. Very cool. I did like that scene. One of my favorite MC fight scenes. How do you feel about Star-Lord having superpowers? It's fine. I wasn't so hot on it. Who cares? I kind of preferred him as like, you know, Han Solo type. So having superpowers is kind of weird. It's not terrible, but, you know. I do like... Whether he'll ever use them again to be seen. He relinquishes them. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay, okay. Because they were like, if you kill your dad... His living, like... Gives you the power? Yeah, because, like... Okay, okay. I think the... Yeah, because the point is, if they kill his initial home planet, that destroys any influence he has, and okay. he can't regenerate anywhere. Yeah. So that also destroys any power that would go to Peter. Okay. Um. So, yeah, from then on, I think he's just a human being, basically. Maybe he's a little more resilient or something, but he's basically just okay. a human being. Okay, okay. I mean, the giant Pac-Man and all that shit, it gets a little much. Yeah. It's... Honestly, no, though, it is better than the typical... MCU climax, I think. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. Actually, Guardian Two it was a, it was a good movie. It's pretty I good. Did like it, yeah. It's pretty good, and, and like you said, the heart to it, like Yondu, that's not even just tacked on. It's pretty. It's it's like yeah, a pretty feel, good through line, and everything. Okay, maybe I can give James Gunn some credit then. Yeah. It did feel like he actually, you know, had his voice in that. He put his work in on that yeah. one. Uh-huh. Guardians Three is yet to be seen. The holiday special is yet but, to be uh, seen. The, the holiday special. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, so. Recap real quick. Recap of so the of at, the mid the middle section. So starting from the top. Yeah. Our our favorite movie in, in the mid tier is Captain America. Then it's Guardians One. Then it's Thor. Thor One. Black Panther. And then Guardians Two. Okay. And then we have. Two. Then R- Ragnarok after Guardians Two. 
I would maybe say... Honestly, Evan, you want my real opinion? Yes. This is supposed to be R and S, Evan. We're supposed to give our real nerdy opinion. Okay. okay. Yes. So what do you want me to say, Evan? You want me to lie to you? You want me to say Hulk? You want me to say Ant-Man? If you say Incredible Hulk is like... You want me to say Hulk? I'm be like, say that should be towards the bottom. Is that, is that what you want me to say? No, I want you or to... Or do you want me to be real with you? I thought Ragnarok was real. You were, you were the one saying Ragnarok. You know I'm saying after Guardians 2. <laughs> yeah. Evan. Yes. Iron Man 3. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. I like Iron Man 3. It's certainly a movie. It's certainly a film. Directed by Shane Black. Mm, Shane Black. <laughs> Iron Man 3. It wasn't it wasn't horrible. The thing with Iron Man 3 at the time was right after Avengers 1. I remember thinking like when I first saw the trailer I was like, "Oh, this looks really exciting. I thought it was going to be like exploring the PTSD thing." Yeah. You remember they made that like a big thing in like the first trailer. Well, because it basically what the movie looked like to me, um, it looked like it was Iron Man versus terrorists. Yeah, I thought... It, and it looked like Iron Man with PTSD. It made sense they were going into that direction with the Mandarin. Yeah. You know what I mean? For whatever is going on in the world, I guess. I guess making it like some Taliban type thing, yeah. it made sense. Or like ISIS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but a more like ground the um, I almost said the Mandalorian ground the Mandarin in some form of realism, which could have been cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I thought that's where they were gonna go, so I was really excited for that, and I thought they were gonna explore like Tony's PTSD from Avengers and all that. Yeah, yeah. But then they don't really ever do anything with that in yeah. the actual movie. Yeah. Then it's not much of a through line after that. It's cool. It doesn't have much of a through it's line. Cool. Um, the Mandarin. Well, actually, there's I a twist where he's just Guy Pierce, so. Can I say something real quick? It, it, they, they did nothing with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, just like, it, it has to do with, with what you're just saying. Because you're right, because they, they kind of mentioned that, I think, two times. And they could have had it pay off in the finale somehow, but it doesn't. Because he just, he collapses at the bar with Rhodey in the opening. Yeah. And he collapses in this, into the suit, which I like that part. Mm -hmm. And then later he kind of has the kid trigger him. And then the kid kind of consoles him. And he's like, we'll go build something. It'll help you. And he's like, you're right. We'll go build something. And then it never comes up again. And I feel like that was perfectly set up to have it pay off in the in the climax. But it doesn't. They didn't do anything with know. it. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, you're right. That's bad to me. I don't like the twist about the Mandarin. Like I said, they had a chance to take a really cool... Vi We're never going to see the Iron Man and the Mandarin face off. We will not do that. Yeah, because the Mandarin, they just made him generic businessman, Guy Pierce, who turns red lava. He turns Honestly, into red lava man. The, uh, the, and I hate that final fight with all the Iron Man suits. I think it's made ten times worse by just the whole Mandarin thing specifically. It's made ten times worse by the fact that this dude... This dude rips his shirt off and screams, I am the Mandarin. And it's this white gentleman in a, in a you're not the Mandarin. You're Guy Pierce. Where's your rings and green robe? Who turns red in lava. Yeah, you're the extremist guy. You're like a, actually, I, I saw recently. They just like, want to use the name. Guy Pierce, Guy Pierce's character, what's his name? Jake Paul. Jake Paul, yeah. What's his name? I don't remember. Yeah, Jake Paul. Whatever his name. Killian? Was that Killian, it? yeah. yeah. His, like in the comic, he's like a no name scientist. He's not even a villain. You know what I mean? Yeah, they just took the character and repurposed him. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like what they did with Ned Leeds for Spider Man, pretty much. They just repurposed kinda, him and yeah. made him ganky. Kinda, yeah, yeah, kinda. But even then, at least. I don't know. Like, why even name him that? I don't know. And I, I just, it just pisses me off that he's like, I am the Mandarin. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I don't like him. You don't do anything the Mandarin does. Except and then, for make Iron Man angry. And then it also looked pretty silly, Pepper having the extremist powers. That and she does stupid. that like, she jumps like 10 feet in the air. You remember that at the end of the movie? It's very dumb. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, like Yeah, because she does a back. I like when she's in the suit though. That was cool. In the beginning? Yeah, yeah. That's great. Iron Man 3 doesn't start out too bad, but it progressively gets worse i agree yeah it's it, a lot of uh, um you will notice a pattern especially i think with me and evan is that uh the the, the climax or the third act or the whatever the uh, beginning of the end of the second act whatever the <laughs> fuck the climax 
usually is where you lose us. Yeah. Um, because they're all CGI goof ass. Well, that, but they're also like like we said, like sometimes before they even hire the director, the ending is done. The climax is is done. It's filmed. It's recorded. It's rendered. Yeah. It it reminds me of Endgame's final battle. That's why I don't like it. Or even like you said. Far from home. It's just yeah. a bunch of CGI flying it's around all over the screen. Yeah. Another thing I don't like about Iron Man 3 is that he's barely ever in the suit in it. I remember you said that didn't bother you. I didn't like it, him like controlling the suits remotely. I yeah. just didn't like I don't know, I didn't like that. Oh, and then we can also talk about the ending of Iron Man 3. Again, you can put this on oh, this is the next movie's fault, but him blowing up the suits and then they do nothing with that. I guess you can't really pin that on Iron Man 3. But you know what I mean? He blows Even, up the suits. Well, no. I'll, and then what? he's Iron Man again in, in Age of Ultron. It didn't make any I sense. Think, I think I will contest that point, Evan. Not that we're keeping track. But I just think it works fine. It's not like I love it, you know, the ending. But it works for whatever they were trying to say in that movie, you know. Like, the whole point of the movie was like, oh, I'm capable on my own. I don't need uh, the sh- shield. Which he begs for in the next movie, <laughs> but you get my point. Um, the shield. <laughs> yeah, and because in this movie he's like, "Oh, I don't need protection on my own man," and then he's like, "I need a shield." Oh yeah, I thought you were talking about. It. I thought you literally meant like Captain America shield. Oh, yeah. I, I got thrown That's off. That's my father's shield. Yeah, th- no, I thought what you were talking no, about. No, like, no. so I was like, "Wait, what?" I got Weird. confused. Yeah, we might have just unlocked some type of cool, <laughs> cool character arc. I don't know, but Iron Man three. I like the cool, funny suits. I like the action figures. I like the part. I do actually really. I like, like all the merchandising. It's actually the the part where his house blows up is really cool. I but, agree. That's the best scene in the movie. But of course, he begged for it. Again, Iron Man's a beggar, I guess. You know what I mean? Not really. He du- he. This- I don't remember enough about it to the, 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 to. In detail, be like, yes. <laughs> he baits a renowned, not renowned, he he baits an infamous terrorist on live television and does nothing to protect himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that scene is cool, but this is completely your fault and not in like a slick, like, kind of way. It's like, it, it's like, this is your fault in a way that makes you look very fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I but do, we got to see Pepper in the suit, and it was cool. It's really I like that. It does. It tingles my little heart when he he does like the gesture that we saw earlier, to kind of like he like in this movie they introduce something where he starts doing gestures to control the, sh- the suits. They don't do this. They don't really use that ever again. But he's he like um, because like you know in the in they the, always change the way it the suit works for like for Tony. I, I like. I that guess of, it makes sense that it's advancing, but they do always change it. Eventually. But visually, it, I'm gonna say eventually it just became a way for Marvel to be lazy and just always use CGI and just literally <laughs> with in, the nano stuff and all in that. Real time, render it all around his body. Yeah, exactly. And, and then do nothing else. Pretty much. <laughs> no, but I wanted to say real quick though, I do really like the style of this movie. One specific thing though, I was gonna say is like I really do like the hand gestures, like when the suit's like trying to protect him. I think it's like. The suit is triggered to protect him by his, like, heart racing because of the PTSD, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I remember one scene where he, like, freaks out. The suit, like, automatically comes on, right? Well, because it does – it kind of does that. It lets him in the suit in the bar. I think yeah, that's what you're uh-huh, about. yes. No, but later he's, he's in bed with Pepper, and he starts freaking out in bed. And then the suit, like, thinks he's being attacked because mm-hmm. it's, like, his adrenaline's up. But he's just panicking because of, you know, the PTSD. And then the Iron Man suit kind of goes and attacks Pepper. And then he does like a specific kind of like double hand. To like, stop it. You know the William Shatner double hand punch? Yeah. He does that on the suit. <laughs> he does that on the suit and it falls apart and turns off. I always thought that was really cool. Like I like the style of how they work in this movie. And it, Shane Black or whoever, probably whatever Marvel guy made this like three years before Shane Black was hired. Whoever, yeah. did, whoever did that, they did a really cool job making the Iron Man suits feel really like. Not junky, mm-hmm. but more like tinkery, which was also kind of... Which the, I like way more than the nano thing. Of course. Yeah. But it also falls in line with kind of the mechanic kind of theme of the movie mm-hmm. and everything. But plus it's just like a cool style I really like. And I like when um, it's Christmas. 
I don't like that actually. <laughs> but I like when it is on like Christmas time and he's like working on the suit. Yeah. And it's like kind of he's working on it and it's like punching him in the gut and they get, oh no it hurt it hit my nuts too hard oh no. Uh, yeah, right. That's cool. Yeah, I'm cool. I like that. I like that. See a little extra Iron Man flair in there. I think this is definitely the um, it's the best we'll ever get for an Iron Man sequel, which is not saying much, but. Because we're never getting another one. Because we'll never get another one. But it's definitely... I mean, it's better to me than the rest of the Avengers movies in terms of just Iron Man. Better than Iron Man... I mean, better than Avengers 1? He went great in Avengers 1. Well, this is post-Avengers 1. Oh, you mean just after that? Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't know. I liked him in Infinity War. And those are at the top. Are we I already guess, agreed those are in our top five? I guess that's a whole different discussion. But Infinity War isn't necessarily up there because it's a good Iron Man movie. He's good. I feel like that's yeah. That's more of a thing for Avengers One. I think he's good because he kind of carried that movie. Well, he's, he's one of the people who carries it's Avengers slick One. In Avengers like it's it's slick an Iron Man movie. Avengers One, pretty much. I don't know if I'd agree with that, but call, he he does he he's one of the better parts. Of I call him the main character. In yeah, I would agree. I would agree. But uh, but that's almost true for almost all the Avengers movies. He usually takes the leading role. He's definitely the main character in Age of Ultron. I'd say in Infinity War also. I think... As far as the heroes go. I know there's a thing. Oh, Thanos is the main character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanos but, is literally based on Superman, the movie from 1971. Have people actually said that? That's not the year. Oh. Uh, that's not the year, sorry. But yeah, well, Kevin Feige said this thing where he was like, we... We, as a team, we watch Superman 1. We base every movie structure on it. <laughs> I think he said that. I think he said that. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kev. Oh, oh one more thing. Sorry. Yeah. I do think it's kind of clever, the whole, like... The cover is pretty cool, but they take it way too far. Of, like, these failed science experiments are exploding people on the street. And then they're just kind of like, we don't want people to figure out what we're actually doing, so we're going to say they're terrorist attacks. Oh, the extreme thing? Yeah. But they, but the thing is, like, is making up a terrorist even worth the amount of throwing off you're doing? It's pretty involved. You're challenging Iron Man on TV. It's like blaming COVID on bats. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> that actually might get us flagged. I'm not kidding. So we'll keep it in. If we get a, over 100 views on this, it's getting flagged. So we'll keep it in. So we'll keep it in because we'll get a fucking 14 views. Yes. Which is great. Thank you. Anyways, Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. What do you think? You know what? Wait, am I willing to put it that high? Maybe I can concede Iron Man 3. Just because, like you said, I guess it does have more personality, whatever that means for an MCU movie. At this point, it's starting. To, we're, we've already gotten to the point where they're, they become interchangeable. I don't think so. But if you have that much passion for Iron Man 3, I'm willing to just let you leave it there. Well, yeah. Iron Man 3 under what? Ragnarok, right? Okay. Oh, you don't want to have Ragnarok that high? I was going to say maybe Iron... Well, because I did stop you before we did Ragnarok. Would you rather have Ragnarok above it? What do you think? Ooh, I, I'm not crazy about either of those movies. I like them both. You know what? I might be willing to say Iron Man 3. Because I feel like you did, Loki, you did sell me a little okay. bit. You did sell me I'm a little bit. i to hear that. I'm it's been a that. long time since I've seen either of those movies, but... Because Ragnarok, like I said, the fact that they just made a Thor movie, a Guardians movie, that really bothers me. I know what you mean, because you can make a movie as good as you want, but if it's, like, really derivative... Yeah, and be. Iron Man 3, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be Captain America, the first Avenger, or anything. It just feels like an Iron Man movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree so, with that. For that reason, I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay, Iron I, Man 3. Evan, I, I went easy on you. <laughs> I had more to say about Iron Man 3. I cut myself short. Okay? Iron Man 3. I think I think that's a good spot for him. So what do we got left, Evan? You want to you, you wanna pitch me on what should be next? Eventually, here in the mid-tier, I think we're just going to start throwing shit at the wall. Pretty much. But it's I'm already kind of at that. Wait. Ooh. You got a couple... Because like, I... No, I wasn't thinking. What? I actually do enjoy Ant-Man 1. More than Iron Man, of course. I do like it more than Iron Man 3. But I'm willing to say that Iron Man... Leave Iron Man 3 higher. If we're going to try and make... I don't know. Is this list objective? Are we trying to make it like an objective quality list? 
I think you we're know just what I mean? trying to... We're just going to try and um, convince each other, and it'll be more objective than it would have yeah. been. Not necessarily... Because that's a completely different video if it's like... The thing about right Ant-Man... Now, is that it's bad. No, it's not terrible. It's not great. But the thing... The real reason I like Ant-Man... I feel like I've already said this for a few movies already, which doesn't... It really doesn't... It speaks volumes on the MCU, I think, because of that. The reason I like Ant-Man is because of the characters and yeah. the actors in it. I can see that. Um, but Iron Man 3 has much more vision and direction behind it. I never thought I'd hear you say that. It's it's true, though. Yeah. The thing about Ant-Man is that the direction, as far as the direction goes, as far as the filmmaking goes, it's so bland. I think, yeah, I think, at least for you, I'm not huge on Ant-Man, um, but it does make sense to me what you're saying is that, like, like Michael Douglas. Does it have a, any distinct style to Ant Man? Like no, and, there, and I think there I is. Think we should start talking about this now about the whole solo movie thing. Is that because personally, in general, I love solo movies. I prefer it. I like to just think about and look at you know the main character and, and think about that for two hours, whatever. But for the MCU, the solo movies become extremely samey, which I also think is one reason that Thor Ragnarok popped off a little bit. Um, cause they just threw another major character in there. But I think that started with Ant-Man, honestly. What? Oh, the, the same solo movies? Ant-Man was before Doctor Strange. Yeah. Was Ant-Man the first character, like, that got a solo movie after, like, phase one? I well, think. if you're not counting sequels. Yeah, the first, like, origin movie, sorry. Yeah, He was, was the first origin movie? Well, no, I don't know, Guardians of the Galaxy. Nah. It's a team movie, but... I think, that's, I think that gets by. Okay. I don't think that counts. Yeah, I think Ant-Man. So, yeah, me and Evan kind of agree on after phase one. So, right? So, like, Iron Man, Cap, whatever, get a pass. I don't even know about Hulk. I haven't seen Hulk in years. But It's not a good movie. But basically, Iron Man, Cap, Thor, phase one, they get a pass. But after that, all the solo movies feel like the same movie with a little different kind of uh, skin put on top of it. That's the thing about Ant-Man. It doesn't have any life outside of the actors and the characters. The actors save it for you. Yeah, pretty much. And that's the thing. But that doesn't say much for the movie itself. Ant-Man is my Ryan Reynolds. Evan doesn't like Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan either, but I'm just saying, like, I don't like Paul Rudd. I don't know why. Why do you not like Paul Rudd? Paul Rudd's awesome. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. He's okay. Clueless, bro. Clueless. Clueless. He was. What a good movie. Is that by Marvel Studios? <laughs> if it ain't by Marvel, I don't know. Is that A24? What is that? Yeah, Clueless. It's A24. Is that one of your fancy movies? No. No, I know Clueless. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you want to put Ant-Man under Iron Man 3? Um, what do you think? I feel like Iron... The thing for me is like... We could maybe put Iron Man 3, Iron Man 2. What do you think? I think Ant-Man deserves to be above Iron Man 2. Wow, I never thought you'd give it that. Well, Iron Man 3 is the one I ride for, not really Iron Man 2. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, the fact that, I don't know, I feel like... What about Thor? What about Thor? Thor 1? We had Thor 1 at the top of... You like the Thor 2 or Ant-Man better? Ant-Man. Ant -Man. I like Ant-Man more. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think we should go Iron Man, Ant-Man. Okay, yeah. Honestly, I think... Okay, this is just my opinion, and we can just bypass this. Honestly, I like Age of Ultron more than Ant-Man. I'm just going to say it. Um, uh, <laughs> Age oh, of Ultron. Oh, jeez. Age of Ultron isn't as bad as a lot of people make it out to be. Yeah. People make it out to be it. like Batman and Robin or something. Yeah, which I don't bad. agree with. Especially after, I remember, I have, we both agree on that. We both had more appreciation for Age of Ultron after we saw Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, the thing about Age of Ultron, it's not terribly made or anything. The thing about Age of Ultron it's is like just like, Iron a Man lot too. of it's just filler. It's like Iron yeah, Man Yeah, it feels like a filler movie. It's definitely like... It I doesn't feel like, it doesn't have the weight that an Avengers movie should have. Yeah, I can but it's a fun little Avengers side story or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you get which fucking, is fine. Uh, classic Pietro Maximoff. Okay. He's one of the worst parts of the movie. <laughs> he was not good. Um, well, I think the worst part of the movie is just the fucking story. 
in general. Yeah, I, I can agree with like, that. Uh, it kind of grinds to a halt with the, the house... And I don't like how Ultron was, like, James Spader doing a Robert Downey Jr. impression. Yeah. Being a... You know what I mean? I don't... I don't like... I prefer Ultron to be an evil robot, not... That sounds like a good... A jokey James Spader trying to be Robert Downey Jr. That's like a good pitch in a writer's room. But on screen, you just kind of want to see, like, Marvel Ultron. Like, you remember in the first... See... They, they have a knack for this, of making the trailer seem like something else. You remember in the first trailer, it, Ultron seemed evil as fuck? Yeah. When he was like, oh, there are no strings I, okay, on me. Real that was quick, like, yeah. He seemed like an evil robot man. That's I what we to, want. I thought that trailer was epic as fuck. It was. He said, he said, he said, like, yeah, what are the he said there are no strings the on Pinocchio me. The Pinocchio shit. Yeah. yeah. He was like, there are no strings on me. <laughs> he sounded epic as fuck. And, and, um,. Yeah, like you said, like he he makes no effort to be menacing. It's yeah, like, he's jokey, which which Ultron, we don't like. Ultron's like the God King Terminator. Like, yeah, what do you want? Like, he's not. It was pretty simple what they had to do with it. Yeah, they made him Iron Man's bastard son. They messed that up. I yeah. don't like that. And then another thing I don't like about Age of Ultron is again Tony Stark creating the villain. That's awesome though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yo, yeah, that shows a great. Well, and also we have both agree with this. Age of Ultron. There's so much setting up in it oh yeah which is weird a lot of setting up yeah they gave they gave new rock stars a lot of thumbnails yeah <laughs> for, pretty much for age of ultron but yeah yeah they do so much setup in it i think that was some mandated shit too for a fact yeah where it's like you know avengers movie and avengers movie should feel like a closing point not that's what you're building too. Yeah. That's not what you're building off of. Yeah, yeah you know what for I mean? A fact, I agree. In that way, I guess we say it's a filler movie, but at the same time they it, they did set up a million other things. I guess it's really way, weird. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Yeah. They're trying to do too much things at once. I think that one was definitely a studio thing. Yeah. Which I guess you can say for every MC movie, but <laughs> But it, it, particularly with Age of Ultron, it shows through, like, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. They are like, Joss, you have to do this, this, and this. And I feel like Joss Whedon gets a lot of shit for them. You know, everyone hates Joss Whedon now, which, whatever, I don't care, but... Yeah, cheat on your wife, I don't care. <laughs> it, not, did, not, is that what he did? Yeah. Okay. I don't think he did too much else. No, I, no I'm no. i talking about the reason... I was talking about Justice League when I brought up why everyone oh, hates him. Oh. But there is that, too. The fact that he got canceled or whatever. There are reason people hate Joss Whedon. Oh, and I guess it's like he was also an asshole to people on set, which, yeah, don't do that. He's a director. Um, but I think it kind of went beyond that. I don't know, like, too too much. Story. I think it... Oh, I think we... No, wait, wait. Like, I think he did some fucked up shit to Gal Gadot, you know, which is pretty messed up. You know, no, but he did do some fucked up shit to Gal Gadot, because he was like... Did he, he lock her inside, like, the set or whatever? I know, I know... I don't yeah, know if that was just something else i'm pretty sure there were multiple scenes in justice league where he started yeah he started like tormenting her and he was like you have to do this or i'm gonna ruin your career yeah yeah, yeah. and he's an asshole there was a part where like she was just she just was like this is fucking degrading like you can't oh yeah making her jump on top of ezra miller or whatever wasn't it that he made that was a joss thing yeah ezra i think Wonder Woman is, like, laying down, and then Barry falls on her tits. Okay, that was it. Okay. And then he just, he was, like, berating her about it, and eventually he just made a double do it. Yeah. And she he just didn't let her have any say on her character and shit like that. Which, I mean, I guess I'll say that for Zack is, like, all the butt shots were Joss. <laughs> yeah. They weren't Zack. Yeah. I think. Even if we don't like Zack's vision, I think he probably, he seems more collaborative than Joss Whedon. And plus he picked Gal Gadot. Yeah. So it's like, Joss just had no respect, of course. So yeah, I mean, you know, in some ways fuck Joss, but at the same time... My point is though, I don't, I don't entirely pin Age of Ultron on Joss Whedon. Yeah, me either. No. I I think the stuff that shined through in Age of Ultron, I think that was Joss. The good stuff, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because, you know... We'll get to this in a little bit, I guess. But the first Avengers movie, Joss knocked it out of the park. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. It's a great movie. And ultimately, like, no matter what kind of Dan Schneider, Harvey Weinstein stuff they get up to, a movie's a movie. I, I don't think, I don't think he, he, we can't slander him that bad. He, I don't think he ever did anything that hey, look, egregious. I didn't, I didn't make an accusation. I made a comparison. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
No matter what type of cancelable shit you do, ultimately you made a movie, and I'm going to discuss it here with my friend Evan on RNS. Okay. There's no yes. other way. Um, but yeah, Age of Ultron, great movie. Right? It confirmed to be a 10 out of 10. <laughs> no, okay, so so Age of Ultron, where do you land on it? Where do you land on it? What do you think? I would put it below Ant Man, I guess. Let's put Iron Man 3, Evan, okay? Under Guardians, and then we'll put Ant Man. And then once after Ant Man. I will also say, though, a lo- I, I had to come back to Ant Man real go quick. Ant Man, it had, you know. I don't know if this was Peyton Reed or not. Maybe it was Paul Rudd. Somebody threw this in. The stuff about... Um, Maybe it was Edgar Wright. No, the Smith thing was in Ant-Man 2. But they had The Cure in Ant-Man 1. Okay, he's got a good taste in music, okay? I like The Cure. I like The Smiths. That's his little personal thing. I don't thing. think that was Peyton Reed at all. Maybe it was Paul Rudd. I don't was, think that was Marvel. I think it was like the sound mixer. <laughs> I don't think that was anyone. Really? Yeah. Even might have even been... um. What's his name? No, not Michael. Yeah, maybe it was Michael Douglas. Okay, it was Michael Douglas. What's the other he guy? was popping in the eighties. What's the other guy? The guy who's like, and then Deadpool came, and then we went to the Avengers Tower, and then we fell off. Um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, What's I can't remember. Name? Michael Pena. Michael also, Pena. I like my Michael Pena. Also, he's a good actor. Okay, Ant Man. Wh- okay, what's next, Evan? What is the next one under Ant Man? Should we say Age of Ultron? Personally, I would say that, but I feel like. I just kind of like Age of Ultron. I don't know. know. What do you like? Actually, no. I think I do like Thor. The Everyone hates Thor the Dark World. I know that's kind of a meme. uh, But I might like Thor the Dark World more than Age of Ultron 2. But you're not going to agree with that at all. I don't think there's any way I could convince you to bring Dark World up. Not really. Because, Um, again, this is another... See, this is just a thing for me. The thing in the Dark World is that I just really like the characters. But there's not much else going on in the movie. Well, you know what? I think uh, what we were saying is like... Because I like uh, you know, um, him, Natalie Portman, Stellan Skarsgård, uh, Kat Dennings. They all really have great chemistry in those movies. I was sad that they didn't come back in the third one because I liked the, the character Natalie together. Coming back, I guess. Kat Dennings probably is coming back too. Well, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. she confirmed? Oh, uh, I don't know for Thor 4, but I, I forgot like she, she was in WandaVision. I feel so. like she probably is. Yeah, so yeah. I guess she'll probably come back. But my point is that's something I really liked in the first... Two Thor movies. Just Is as that character. dynamic? Yeah, uh-huh. Feels like a CW show. It's maybe cool. I should watch more of the CW. Yeah, maybe you should. No, you don't, no. I compare Thor 1 and 2 to the CW in a sense because the CW always has to have, like, a civilian team plus the superhero. Is it is it bad that I like that? <laughs> it works sometimes. Yeah. I um, felt like it worked... It works much it, better in Thor than it does I'm gonna say it worked for Thor because like, he kind of needed that for yeah. when he's on Earth. Yeah, he's you know what I mean? Very divorced from humanity. So yeah, he needs someone. You can't always have Tony Stark there with him. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think it definitely it works. Well. I'll say this. Well, then I guess it makes sense for them to not be there in Ragnarok because there is no Earth at all in Ragnarok. But oh, true. Yeah, yeah. What were you gonna say though? No, I was gonna say um, it just I compare it to the CW because it is similar, but it works way better, of course, in Thor movies. Just full disclosure: the CW is fucking terrible. Um, <laughs> Especially the Flash is really bad now. Anyways, I'm gonna make an executive decision. Evan. Mm-hmm. I think we should just go ahead and put Thor, the the first, not the first, fuck, the other two Thor movies. We should put them next on the list. What? How do you feel about that? What do you mean? You drop them after Ant Man, Thor two and three. You won't put the Dark Road that high. I didn't think you would want to. I think I think they pretty much belong there. The Dark Elves are pretty bad. Such a nothing villain. Literally yeah. nothing. That's the issue, too, we were talking about with these solo movies, is they become these very... I mean, they try something cool with the kind of dimensional portals little thing with the action sequence. Yeah. doesn't work for me that well. I remember that. But other than that, Thor 2, I don't know, Thor 2 is just very bland. But I kind of have that feeling, too, with, like, Iron it's Man. It's the same thing with Ant-Man. Like I was saying, I feel like the characters are... You just like seeing more of it. Yeah. And I guess that's what, yeah. It just works for you, yeah. And the characters. Um, I say I say Thor... I say Thor 3 and then 2. See, the thing is, like, Thor or Ant-Man, you can say they're bland. That's fine. But I don't feel like like they have as many problems as a movie like Age of Ultron has. 
You know what I mean? Even if Age of Ultron does have more life to it. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It, it all kind of comes down to what you what you think it for. At least in Ant Man, whether it's bland or not, it does have a consistent. Yeah, you know story what I mean. And, and everything, Age of Ultron kind of, you know, it's, and like trying to do a million things at once, like we talked about. Yeah, I feel like that's a big problem. Age, Age of Ultron, Ultron, I would say, belongs below. It doesn't belong on the top half of the mid tier. Yeah, it's in the in general, it's in the bottom half of the MCU movies. Yeah. So yeah, I would say Thor, Thor three and two. Does that work for you? I think. All right. Thor, Thor 3, Thor 2. No, because I would not put Thor 2 this high at all. But guess what, Evan? Yes. We're, we're curating. We're curating. We're making, we're making our own little list. Okay? So what do we have left? So as far as the mid-tier, we only have five movies left. Okay, Evan? We have Age of Ultron, The Hulk, Iron Man 2, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man and Wasp. I think we can, okay. I think at this point we, we can, can just play Age down. of Ultron. We can nail these down. Okay. Age of Ultron. I we both enjoyed enough where we can put it. I completely there. agree that I put those above. That I completely agree. Yeah. Okay. So what about the ones we got left? What's the best one of those? Probably Ant Man and Wasp. You're gonna say is that right? You're not gonna agree. Ant Man and Wasp. Uh, no, I might say Iron Man too. Oh, okay, I'll put that. You can agree with that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I like the Iron Man movies. It's kind of like you were saying with like Thor 2. It's like, even if Iron Man 2... I even said earlier, the movie's fucking boring. But I just like Iron Man. It's cool. Yeah. So yeah. Iron Man 2, after Age of Ultron? No, nah, I don't care. <laughs> so we have <laughs> Doctor Strange, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and what else? And Hulk. And this is like... How who, do you even rank these three? Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? I think since I don't give a shit at all and you like Ant Man and the Wasp at least a little bit, Ant Man and the Wasp would go next. I'm surprised you're not going to bat for Doctor Strange more. I'll put Doctor I'm happy he's not even in the bottom five. We already fought over that. <laughs> so I'm just happy he's not down there. So how about Ant Man and the Wasp, then Doctor Strange, then Hulk? Okay, okay, yeah. Cause Hulk Mmm I feel like I I, I like Hulk more than <laughs> Doctor Strange, honestly. Cause you know, at least Hulk it, least, uh, Stan Lee it was a phase seven. one movie. That's true. And it doesn't have, you know, it feels more distinct than, you know, phase two where all they all feel like they're made by the same exact people. And it's definitely, the I think same it gets a little style. credit for being, it's the second MCU movie, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's like, even if we say like, oh, the, f- the first few solo movies get a pass because they were the first few ones, that was the fucking second one. And then Thor and Cap came after that. Yeah. Which we both put Thor and Cap pretty high. And then, you know, Abomination. Tim Roth was cool as Abomination in it. And I know you like the Harlem fight, right? The fight at the end, yeah. The yeah, fight yeah. at the end is cool. It's fine. Edward Norton, I, like, I kind of wish Edward Norton stayed as Hulk. But then again, yeah, in general, I feel like I wish Edward Norton stayed. Because Mark Ruffalo, he was really good as Hulk in one movie, and then after that, I'm not crazy uh, on him as Hulk. I'm not crazy on him. I don't like the Hulk in, in completely in general at all. I don't like the Hulk that much. Okay, I like the Hulk. But, but Edward Norton, I think, fits. He's more tortured soul. Yeah, you know what I mean? And um, Mark Ruffalo is a bit too goofy. I think Mark We're, Ruffalo definitely fits with the other Avengers cast members better. Yeah, I, I that I, that I agree with. That but like you said, for like a, a Hulk solo movie... Yeah. He works more than Mark Ruffalo. Definitely. Because, like you said, the torture soul thing. Maybe that was why they cast him, because, like, Fight Club, the dur- double personality yeah, thing, that kind of... That definitely makes sense. Maybe that's what they were going for. I never really thought about it like that, but... They don't usually cast like that anymore. Yeah. Where they're like, no, oh, he, you know, he did something similar in the past really well. Let's cast him in a, in a good, you know, good fit. No, no more of that. Yeah, but you're right though. I don't. I couldn't see Ever Norton playing off with the rest of the cast as well as Mark Ruffalo does. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd have to be a little more peaceful. Because he takes himself sure. really seriously, Ever Norton, yes. which is like a known thing about Ever Norton. Why a lot of people don't like him is yeah. that he's like, I don't know if pretentious is the word, but he's like he's kind an, of a, he's an asshole. He's an actor's actor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I agree. Um, Edward Norton's pretty good. He's pretty good, and I like. I also like Tim Roth. Yeah, I Lie did to too. Me, anyone? Yeah, I liked him in Lie to Me. Television that was a show, great Lie show. To me, Tim Roth. I forgot about that. Okay. But yeah, Hulk. Pretty decent argument there for Hulk. Also, I was, you know, I was saying earlier, Stan Lee drinks the funny soda. 
<laughs> he dies. He dies. <laughs> That should have been his last cameo. That should have been his last cameo. That would be good. I like that. Yeah, so it has some points in its favor. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. weird they brought some stuff back from it years later. Like, they finally brought back uh, General Ross. Yeah. yeah. They're like, back years Ross. later, yeah. They're bringing back the thinker you heard in She-Hulk? Um, you mean leader? The leader. Yeah. Oh, the thinker. I always say the thinker. Yeah. DC, the yeah. thinker. <laughs> They're the same character. Well, yeah, they bring about leader. Are they bringing back the same actor though? There's no way. I'm lying. Oh, I think you're serious. Not I'm like, that's kind of cool. Abomination coming back though for She Hulk, right? I saw like Click Hole. And he's gonna be in uh, Shang Chi also. Something. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised though. But the Hulk. The Hulk. Dude, Multiverse of Madness. Edward Norton. He's coming. <laughs> yeah, maybe he will. That'd be kind of cool, I guess. Maybe. I would. I would watch it. Yeah. I'm gonna watch it anyway. Sam Raimi. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do an update every time we review an MCU movie. Yeah. We'll so to... actually, yeah, I feel like Hulk, even though it's not great, a lot of it's really boring. It did have one of the better MCU villains. Abomination was cool in it. Abomination's alright. Yeah, but how many not so hot villains are there in the MCU? <laughs> a lot. I mean, he's better. Than he's the... better than uh, Yellow Jacket from Ant Man. Is he? I would say so. Yeah. At least he looks cooler. I mean, that you can give him that at least. He looks cooler than Tim Roth's a better actor. Yeah. Um, Even though I do like Corey Stoll. Um, who the fuck is that? I don't know. He's the guy who played Yellow Jacket. That's, he's a good actor. No, you made that up. Yeah, I made that up just now. How the fuck does dude remember the Yellow Jacket actor? Because he's a good actor. What, is he, what else is he in? He was in um, what's that movie with Ryan Gosling? First Man. Oh. He was good in that. Yeah, okay. he played a. Uh, what's his name? I forgot what's the other moon guy? Not Neil, <laughs> not Neil Armstrong. Neil Diamond. Uh, Buzz Aldrin. He Buzz played Buzz Aldrin. Aldrin. He was funny in that, and he was in that show with The Strain also. Oh, okay. I didn't finish it, but I liked what I I watched like the first three seasons. I liked it. Okay. Yeah, he was cool in that. Well, I feel like I saw one other thing with him, but I can't remember what it was. Yellow Jacket. Look at yeah, you. just the actor, not the villain. <laughs> Apparently, he's coming back. That's what I heard. I don't know why, but can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait. But yeah. Hulk, then Doctor Strange is under him. Yeah. What do I have to say? Should about we debate this? Doctor Strange? No, because he pretty much just landed there. We're done, uh, except for the top five. But okay, I, so you don't want to talk about Doctor Strange real quick, at all. Real quick, the okay. reason I fought earlier for him to not be in the bottom five worst is I like Doctor Strange, the character. I like the character also, but I don't like him in this movie. Yeah. But he has the funny cape. He flies yeah, around. Yeah, the funny kid. That's another thing he about this movie. A lot of the jokes in this movie just were not funny. The baby Disney cape, the Beyonce thing. Yeah, the, that but was But dude, funny. introduction of Wong? Well, Wong is awesome. Wong number one? Wong is awesome. Huh? But I'll be excited for him in the sequel. The thing that bothered me most about Doctor Strange, like when I first saw it, was like, I remember I thought the pacing in this movie was so terrible. Well, I felt like they spent so much time introducing him and then so much time on the ending with the Dormammu stuff. That they didn't spend any time at all, really, on him becoming the, you know, the Sorcerer Supreme. It kind of just happens. It actually doesn't feel deserved that he's, like, the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, it does not at all. They barely spend any time on his training. It doesn't feel... Like, I feel like that should have been a healthy chunk of the movie. His training, was him becoming done okay. Because it kind of had It didn't make sense to me. How do you become this powerful magician and all that so quick? It's not like he had any experience in this world at the beginning of the movie. He didn't. Yes. Uh, no, I just think it makes sense. That's what I was. That's what I was gonna get to. Is that I do actually like the part where they mention he was an astute doctor. Of course, like, yeah. He pretty much nailed that shit. And of course, in this movie, what does he do? He fucking throws around little lasers. Like he doesn't do nearly as much cool shit as he does in like, like Infinity, Infinity War. War. Yeah. Yeah. So he's doing pretty basic shit, but he's just doing it. But it's almost way. implied that he's like the same character he's in Infinity War by the end of this movie. Which doesn't make sense to me. I don't me. really agree with that. I don't know. He becomes the Sorcerer Supreme I at the end. I think there's of... a lot of implied growth between... Well, I think it's just because he fucking saved the world. Like, Because he knows... he He's like super good on the fundamentals by the end of the movie. I think that's all they're implying. And plus he was, he was able to cleverly use the time stone. And what I actually do... I already made fun of me when I first saw the movie, Evan. I did. Rightfully so. But you're like, oh, like a superhero, cool superhero moment, bro. Like, yeah. Like, about what? Stupid boy. 
At the at Dormammu. When he fights Dormammu. I like that. It was okay. I like it. But the thing I don't like about Dormammu is like he's not the like awesome Dormammu we should have got, you know, like the fire cool score. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? He looks like shit. Yeah. Yeah. He I don't like that. that. Also, most of the, like the magical multiverse realms or whatever, I don't like how they looks at all because They're it looks fucking stupid. Yeah, because it looks like how space looks in Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks like the quantum verse. They always make this look exactly the same. It's basically just Jack Kirby like fractal art. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And then most of the magic in Doctor Strange, it's nothing cool. It's just the. It's just sticks. The and yellow. Sh- yeah. Shields. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, why? They had so much potential, I guess. They could have did a lot with it. Which, I felt like they did use some of that potential in Infinity War. But not in his own movie. Yeah. You know... I completely agree with that. Using the yellow whip, the yellow shields, magic. You know what I mean? That's pretty much all he does. Yeah. I, that's lame. I'm actually thinking, like, that's... How are you going to do a Doctor Strange movie and have that be all you show it's just Doctor like Strange It's shitty kung fu plus the mirror dimension. Yes. I don't like that. That's all they do. And then, like I said, fu. that's his training. It's just learning how to do that. And it's like 20 minutes of the movie, and then he becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. I don't like it. It's not literally 20 minutes, but, you know. And then on top of that, they get, you know, a pretty, you know, a pretty good actress, um, Rachel McAdams, and then oh, they, yeah. they do nothing <laughs> with her. They, she's just in it. Her character... Oh, okay. I do like the part where he fights the ghost, and he's the ghost. But you know, their relationship... And she's in there for that. Their relationship was nothing. Yeah. No, you don't need her. But yeah, they just had... They just needed a love interest, and it really messed up for them to take a good actress, and that's all you do with her. Well, they do that a lot. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> they do do that a lot. I know, it's... Maybe when uh, Benedict Cumberbatch retires, she'll be Doctor Strange... Girl version. I think she's coming back for the the sequel. They're making. They're actually going to do something interesting with her in the sequel, which is okay. I'm excited for that. They're making her another character. I think. Uh, hopefully they don't do what I just said. Which 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 part? They don't make her just Doctor Strange. No, it's not going to be that. Is she a villain? I don't a hundred percent remember. I remember reading this a while ago, like when the Doctor. It'd be Strange really cool if the movie just opens and it's just like. Them savagely fight like magic fighting. Yeah, like, <laughs> that was like a cold open. I'm like, dang, how did she turn into this already? That'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. And it's just, he's just like, yeah, man, the multiverse is fucked yeah. right now. And then, okay, see, I don't like Doctor Strange. Another thing, I feel like they tried way too hard to make him like the um, Tony Stark. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> the thing about Robert Downey Jr. is he can pull off that like, what's the word for it, like. Snark. Not snark, but like he's an asshole but you like him. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. He can he can Robert Downey Jr. can pull that off really well. Benedict Cumberbatch cannot pull that off at all. I he just think, completely came off as an asshole. I actually don't think they were going for that at all. I don't think they were trying to make him likable, like Tony Sark. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was just an asshole and it was like to the point where it was annoying. Yeah. Like where it was hindering the movie to me. Yeah. Like him just bitching consistently you know what i mean well there's that one part early on when like i guess i think it's when his hands are fucked actually no i kind of like the part i just real quick sorry Mm -hmm. i do like when he fucking wrecks his big expensive car and then he goes to the hospital and his hands are fucked and then she's just like yeah your hands are fucked and he's like i could have fixed it (laughs) i like that i don't know why it's not a big huge moment but I do like the because and also the movie up to that point proves to you that like, yeah, he probably could have, and that's probably pretty sad for him. Yeah, which is I don't know, it's kind of cool. So then he also takes it upon himself to fucking fix his hands after the fact too, because he's like, I should have been able to fix this. I'll fix this after. I don't know. I kind of like that, but but yeah, I feel like they they literally just characterize him as like take all the charming out of Tony Stark and make him a wizard. That's the word I was looking for, like charming. Yeah. 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 Uh, not charming at all. No, Doctor Strange. He's kind of charming later. Yeah, but definitely they in, did not pull it off in this one. Yes, yeah. they do really not. Not even do much to. I like it. Wong in the Ancient One though. I'll say that Wong is goat and uh, Wong is a goat. But yeah, Doctor Strange, not the worst MCU movie. Okay, not the worst because it's not in the bottom five. Evan's been telling me for a long time Doctor Strange is the worst one, and I don't agree. So. Is it? 
that was the one I where I saw it where I was like, wow, that was a a bad movie. That was like one of the MC that stands out to me the most. From just like after I saw it, I was like, damn, that was bad. For me, for a while, that was Ant Man and the Wasp. But like I said, the MCU uh, would go on to prove me wrong. <laughs> so but yeah, I think we can move on to top five. Okay, think? yeah. So should we talk about what we think the best MCU movie is first? Oh jeez. No, worst one. The worst one. The way we're doing this is so strange. <laughs> I keep it interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, okay. I feel like we shouldn't start at the top for some reason. I don't know. Why. Yeah, but we did that for the worst and for the and for the um, the mid. But for this one, I think it's interesting. It's like these are yeah. our top five. Pretty definitively, we share them. So it's like, which one of these is the worst? Yeah. Okay, so um, probably for me, Winter Soldier. I think I can agree with that. Really? Yeah. Okay, because it does have a bit of the. I wasn't giving when I first was saying my top five at the beginning. I really was not giving Iron Man one enough credit because that's a great movie. Oh yeah. I think I can put Winter Soldier down there. Yeah. Just uh, for my reasoning, why real quick? It does. It's good. It's really good. A good action movie, fun action movie, but it has a bit of that. MCU pitch kind of syndrome where the MCU will pitch you on something and they'll be like it's fucking what's the um, Breakfast Club guy oh John Hughes yeah they're like oh Spider-Man but it's John Hughes like yeah. it's just shitty Spider-Man yeah <laughs> like it's not no and Guardians like Guardians was like oh yeah it's well they probably didn't even pitch it like that but it's like oh it's Star Wars Avengers <laughs> Star Wars I'm Avengers I'm so sick of those fucking things. no I'll give Guardians credit I don't think they did that I think James Gunn, he actually kind of did his own thing with Guardians. That's true. I'll give it enough. But credit. literally in the marketing of Spider-Man, they were like, it's John Hughes. Yes, yes. Right? Remember they did? They recreated the Breakfast Club poster? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. This one, they pitch you as a political thriller. Yeah. It kind of technically is, <laughs> in a sense. Yeah. But ultimately, you're watching this to watch... I feel like that's a bit of a Winter Soldier downfall. Is that it, at moments it doesn't take itself way too seriously. Like when you're putting that much weight on Robert Redford's boring character, again another weight of a good actor. <laughs> it's like we don't want to see. We want to see Winter Soldier. We don't want to see boring businessman number one hundred and five or yeah, whatever. Yeah, shoot his poor fucking maid in the in the head. Did he? Oh, see, damn! What a savage! Just, what the hell? There's just a point in the movie where it's like. You're kind of like, oh, I guess Robert Redford's evil, maybe. Yeah. And then they're like, well, he he is. He shoots, <laughs> he shoots his maid. It's either evil politician or evil businessman. Yeah. And it's Such boring. Life. Yeah. Life. I do. I kind of agree with you. I feel like it almost sits on the fence a little too much. I feel like it could be. It could take itself more seriously, or it could take itself less seriously. But it's kind of. I like, feel like they tried that with Civil War, and it worked out. Taking itself less seriously. I feel like there's not even time to really think about it in Civil War. Is that a good thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is because it's not the worst yeah. one, right? Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think Winter Soldier does a little bit of the fence sitting. And I think it's not as bad as the other movies, but you can kind of feel a little bit of stagnation similar to what we were saying about the problem with some of the later Soldier yeah. movies. Like with maybe Ant-Man or Doctor Strange and shit like that where it definitely stagnates. But there's there's a lot of shit in this one where it keeps it fresh. I think a lot of that also has to do with kind of like what you're saying, the characters. Like you have Black Widow, you have Nick Fury, um, and of course Bucky. And I think a lot of that keeps it fresh. And I think a lot of, you know, like the Hydra, the whole Hydra thing is pretty punchy. It's pretty good. It shakes up the. I know we're supposed to be it's supposed to be a solo movie, you know, review whatever. But in well, I mean, that's obviously Cap because most of these are team ups. In yeah. The top five. <laughs> but just saying for Winter Soldier, it does have like pretty huge repercussions. Whether they really do kind of with, whether they do it with anything or not, but it's like, bro, you have a show running right now called Agents of Shield. Yeah. And you're just gonna make this movie and shit can that whole show. Like, fuck, <laughs> yeah. fuck that show. They're evil. That's pretty ballsy. Yeah, but, the, like, I don't know. I felt like them getting rid of S.H.I.E.L.D., it didn't, like, really end up amounting to much. It just made it less fun to watch. Like, 
Because instead to... of having shield, okay, now you just have the government instead. You know what I mean? That's what I was gonna say. Is like all it really did is make it less fun to see the government coming. Yeah, it's like they're not wearing shield logos. <laughs> Pretty much, so uh, it's like somebody else just immediately filled up that role that shield had. Yeah, there was never any like power grab or like exactly any yeah thing with that. It just kind of happened, but it just in the context of the movie, I was like, oh fuck. Yeah, like, I can agree with like, that. They're really just gonna do that to shield like that. That's crazy. Yeah, but at the same time. They do that, but at the same time, they kind of don't commit fully with some things. Like uh, Nick Fury, they could have easily at this point they could have easily just killed off Nick Fury here because they've barely done anything with him since this movie. Dude, wait, oh no, uh, Far From Home, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, the barn scene in Age of Ultron. Dude, the barn. He comes. No, wait, hold on. He comes up from behind the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what are you talking about? They could have killed off Nick Fury here, and I feel that would have gave it more of a punch. There's a few moments like that in the MCU. I think we'll get to another one here in a minute. Yeah. But, but, Evan, I think I agree with that uh, for Samuel Jackson here. Never does anything interesting again. Yeah. Um, but he's really good in this movie. He is good in it. Yeah, I agree. Um, but also, I think the same thing for Gwyneth Paltrow, kind of. What, for which Iron one? Iron Man 3. They Iron do a fake 3. out death for her. Oh, yeah, they did. I think it could have been better if she did. No, I don't think they should have killed her because I think that would have made Endgame even worse. They should have just never did the fake-out death for Pepper. Well, then then Iron Man could have retired and got back in time and been with the <laughs> outro and Cap could have died, remember? I don't want anybody staying in the past. Me either. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. That's I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Staying in the past just in general seems like a bad rule. No, because like that's a bad moral, honestly. Similar, I think we, okay, like I said, we talked about it in the end game episode. Go watch that. Well, I was gonna say real quick, it's similar to something we talk about, um, like in real life. Just we're, we're talking about death and bringing people back to life. You never bring someone back from the never. dead. Never, and yeah. it's it's a very similar um, concept. It's a it's a similar um, what's the word? Yeah, concept basically. It's a similar concept. It's like you don't want to fuck with the past. You keep moving. Yeah, like nature tells you to, Tony. <laughs> Um, you should have just stayed with this happy wife and kid. But anyway, no, it's fine that they changed the past. I guess. Or, no, it's this not. not the end game episode. But no, it was bad. Like st- literally living in the past. <laughs> That's a horrible message. What are you t- living in the past for a girl you knew for like a month or whatever, seventy years ago? <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah, he should have probably tried to move on at least. Yeah. He didn't really try. No. But yeah, Winter Soldier, cool movie. Cool movie. Cool movie. So we agree Winter Soldier is the bottom of top five. That is yeah. The, that is mm-hmm. the fifth best MCU movie to yeah. date. What do you think, Evan? What's next? Maybe Infinity War then? Civil War is a better movie than Infinity War. You know don't, what? I agree. Don't, I agree. I'm not. I just had to think about it okay. for a second. These are the best ones. Okay. I had to think about it for a second, okay? <laughs> but Infinity War, I feel like, is actually a pretty. For me, it's a pretty decent jump up from Winter Soldier. I feel that for a lot of reasons. I like, of course, the effects aren't great. Uh, Winter Soldier looks better in almost every way. It looks better. But Infinity War, I like, it's a little, you know, you made fun of the whole Thanos is the main character thing earlier. I was just joking. I don't think that's bad, but. But (laughs) I kind of like that. It's definitely. It makes sense for how many characters you have in it. It's. It's like Endgame, where it's like it's relentless, and it just keeps being fights. Uh, well, I guess End- Endgame isn't even really like that. Endgame is just. But crazy. I get what you mean. Like, there's a lot going on. It, it all happens really quick. Yeah, not even just terms of action, but the whole movie is just relentless. Yeah, it's completely. But in the context of Infinity War, it's like desperation. Yeah. Like everyone is at the. End I agree. Of the when movie. I was watching Infinity War the first time, like it felt like it held weight. Yes. You know what I mean? You're like, oh shit, just seeing one thing happen. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, no joke. Yeah. yeah. I will say that. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. It's th- it's a th- it's a true thriller for the modern age. <laughs> yeah. It felt more like the finale we should have gotten yeah. way more than Endgame does. If the, if if Endgame was just Infinity War Part 2, the world would be at peace. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would be in love. It'd be great. Cuz as many characters that are in this movie i feel like for the most part all of them you know at least the character we really care about want to see a lot of them get you know decent time to shine in it yeah yeah 
And you even get characters like they gamble a lot on Black Panther here. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Black Panther was not a success yet. Was it before Black Panther yeah. 1? Yes. No, no, no. This was after Black Panther it was 1. Filmed at Black the Panther same 1 came out. They were filmed at the same time. Okay, okay. I see what you mean. Okay, so but it came out before Infinity they War. They put a pretty big fucking uh, gamble on Black Panther here. I guess they knew it would pay off. I guess they, pe- they already needed, knew people liked him from Civil War. They just needed a field. Yeah. To put them in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like Wakanda. The Wakanda, yeah. I think one thing... One thing that holds the movie back, of course, is the the team aspect. You know, it's a lot going on. Maybe why it's not number one. At the at times, like we both said this before, it feels like it's not even a movie. It just feels like a montage. <laughs> you know I what I mean? This one, though... Because there's so much going on. This one does a lot more to feel like a consistent, singular story than something like Endgame. Or well, the thing about Endgame, it's just like... A good portion of it, it's just Easter eggs. Yeah. Where it's, that's like, okay, that literally makes it feel like a montage. Yeah, there's, because in, yeah, I, I agree with You that. get what I mean? Or a compilation. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, but I think in Especially War, that they're literally taking stuff from the older movies. Yeah. At least Infinity War, it's all new. Yeah, so, all yeah. new. All new, all different Infinity War. <laughs> but I like in Infinity War how, of course, you have the through line with Thanos. And, you know, he kind of is the main character, I guess. Or maybe you have to stretch that a little bit to make yeah. that true. But I think he, I think of him as the main character. And on top of that, you have Iron Man has his own little story. Spider-Man has his own little story. Doctor Strange does, too. Doctor Strange is the best he's ever been, of course, in Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. Iron Man is, like... He doesn't get great characterization or anything, but he's good. I feel like the desperation thing you're talking about, though, it comes out really heavy in Tony. Yes. Especially when he's fighting Thanos at the end. Like, just using everything he has. and Yeah, and, like, it does not work at all. Yes. For one drop of blood. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Robert Downey Jr. just did, like, I don't know, he does a lot, like, a lot of work with, like, his face, I guess. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah. because he looks like he's, like, scared (laughs) as fuck. Yeah. Or, like, angry, scared, all of that. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. He did a really good job in this movie. He is really good in it. Especially for being in a fucking room with ping pong balls. Yeah, no, yeah, seriously, yeah. really good. I like how Captain America does nothing. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, okay. Uh-huh. Let me... We've been shitting on... We shit on Winter Soldier and Infinity War quite a bit for being at the top five. Let me say something I really like is... I really like Vision and Wanda. I'm going to say, I feel like we were giving Infinity War some good uh, props just now. It's pretty decent. You you always know me though. I gotta try and bring it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Iron Man's great. We were saying. Yeah. But I just I just before I almost forgot. Just oh, Wanda and Vision, they're awesome in this. And I. I really like how. If they didn't bring back Vision, this would be my favorite death in the MCU. I would like it more than Yondu. Maybe me too. It's more understated. Yeah. It would have been the most understated one. Oh, God, speaking of deaths, I forgot how long that movie is. There's a lot of shit going on yeah. in the movie. I mean, I know we already said that, but I forgot. all the deaths in the movie, I've already been... We didn't even talk about... Okay. Rewinded. This isn't an Infinity War review, I'm sorry. Yeah. But there's a lot of cool shit in Infinity War. I know, I know. And that's another thing, too, is about Endgame, like you were saying, is like, Endgame, I've seen all this shit. Yeah. Like, they just I don't go- need to see this again. In Infinity War... It's all new. Loki dies... Heimdall dies. They sent Hulk through fucking Doctor Strange's house. And he's like, we're going to fucking die. There's a purple one of me in space. Yeah. Like, please. Like, the fucking... The whole desperation thing running through it is great, too. There's nothing like that in Endgame. Mm-hmm. There's no... Because, I mean, fucking desperation isn't really much of a theme. But at least it's a tone. You know? What is For Endgame? what their mission is in Endgame, they don't feel... It doesn't feel like there's any urgency... Yes. Yeah. Zero urgency. Yeah. They know they're gonna win. Yeah. It doesn't feel like that in, in Infinity War. No. Cause and and especially because it ends, they don't win. But, yeah. Um. Yeah. They feel it's so much more painful too in the end when they lose. Yeah. Because it's not even a fucking depraved, uh, crazy scene at the end, but you feel it a whole lot more because you know the whole time everyone was fighting like it was the fucking like they were ready to die for this. Yeah. Shit. Which is weird because it doesn't feel like that. At- at all in the final battle of Endgame. No. Which I guess, it, the final battle of Endgame, it has the same stakes, pretty much. Same exact stakes. Yeah. If not, f- 
fucking more dire. But the this. whole thing, the whole final battle and game just feels like a pat on the back. Yeah. You know and what I mean? All, all it is is, yeah, it's a victory lap. Yeah. Yeah. Even Whereas though, in Infinity War, it really does feel like, like we were saying, like there's a lot of urgency in this. Infinity War is so much better than Endgame. Oh, it is. Much better movie. Please. Please. Five, it's in the top five, whereas Endgame's in the bottom five. It's just a great comparison. It's a great comparison. But uh, all the fights are good. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. All the fights. This and another movie we are soon to bring up Ooh. are the only times MCU Spider-Man is good. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he's good in this. Yeah. Um, not as good as Civil War, but yeah. He just... The Russo Spider-Man does not feel like... The John other, Watts Spider Man, whatever that guy's name is, <laughs> yeah, they don't feel like the same character. No, and I don't. do. I do actually kind of appreciate that the Russos were like, let's give him a little arc in our two movies. He kind of feels like the same guy. Yeah, he does. Yeah, you don't need Homecoming, and his powers aren't the same in the Russo movies versus the John Watts movies. He has movies. a much more comics accurate kind of in the. Russo's movies in yeah, Civil like War and Infinity War. Not even just powers, but physicality, like yeah. in general. And you can clearly see that we'll get this in in Civil War also, but in Infinity War, you see it too with the hair standing up. He clearly has Spidey sense. Yeah. Which, you, but in Far From Home, they try to make it seem like he doesn't have a thing yet, God, or it's so, not home. I know that's so bad. Yeah. We so. need to talk about that. The you Peter Tingle. Wrong, and there's a lot of them. Yeah. So sorry, but there's that's a good point too. Is Shit like that. God, that's bad. I and know. also, one more thing. Mm-hmm. Compared to Endgame, the Black Order are pretty cool. They give you some actual faces to fight. I will say, I did like... We were talking about... Unfortunately, this is a thing for all the Avengers movies. Captain America doesn't do much. No. He gets to walk out of the shadows. Yeah. I will say, I did like when he fights um, one of the Black Proxima Order guys. Midnight. No, not Proxima Midnight. The other one. Corvus Glaive. Yeah, yeah. I did like that. That was cool. They fight twice in it. They fight at the beginning and they fight at the end. Oh yeah, and I'm cool. Some for some reason, Captain America is stronger than Vision because he Captain America dubs it, dude, and Vision struggles with him twice. Oh, because Vision weird. was um, bleeding out or whatever. Both times, because there's a beginning where they fight him, and He's then still at the weak end, at that, though, right? I guess, yeah. I think so. But anyway, Captain America dubs it, dude, and Vision could not, which is strange, but whatever. Yeah. At least they gave Captain America that. It, it works better in Infinity War than it does in some yeah. other movies. Kind of the, I know we talked about that, I think, in the Endgame video. Mm-hmm. But I think here, uh, Vision's injured the entire movie. Is he at the end? Because they sneak attack him when they first find him. But then, still, he was having way too much trouble. Him and Wanda, and they was, should not have be having as much trouble as they did. Nah, they probably should have just straight up won that fight. Yeah, um, it's weird that, they were, that Wanda and Vision were rescued by Falcon... Black Widow and <laughs> Captain America. That's very strange. It bro. is strange. Whatever. It is strange. That did kind of bother me too, but I can get over it. Yeah, so. Whatever. <laughs> probably, there's probably a lot more to say about Infinity War, but the action's great. Thanos is good. One more thing. I gotta shit on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. The, Gamora, the Gamora death is fucking terrible. I like it. No, why do I... It's just so overdramatic. I mean... It is, it's funny though when she's like, "You could never love anyone," and then he's like literally crying before he <laughs> before he kills her. That was kind of funny. It's not supposed to be funny, Evan. I know, but see, it's funny for the wrong reason because yeah. she's like, like you said, she's so over dramatic about the it. Way she, yes, the way she said, she says, she says, "You were wrong, you lost." Like, God, I hate that part, and it takes forever for her to get thrown off. And, to, like, it lingers on her dead body for so long. Yeah, that part's terrible. But I actually don't mind the Guardians too much. I don't really like any of the Guardians in this movie. I kind of like when they confront Thanos. No, because I hate that scene with Star-Lord. You know what I'm I mean, talking about. I like the idea, but, like, like the Gamora death, it's drawn out way too long. Yeah, I guess take, like, we should just say for people listening, they, pro- they might not know what we're talking about. Might not remember. Yeah, because yeah. we didn't even say what it was. It was um, where Star Lord freaks out when they almost have the gauntlet off. Oh, I wasn't talking about that. Oh, you weren't. No, that's what I'm talking I'm sorry, about. Yeah, where they almost have the gauntlet off, and then he freaks out 
like at the worst moment possible. It it makes no sense because it, it's like okay, we know you're he upset about knows Gamora. About to win. Yes, and yeah. you know what the stakes are. These are like the highest possible stakes there could possibly be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not a time for you to freak out about Gamora, so which is understandable. Me. But you know what I mean. You cannot fuck this up. Yeah. And then he does, and it's so egregious. It makes so little sense to me that, or I would just call it bad writing. Honestly, I, I don't even think like you could say, "Oh no, this is in line for Star Lord." No, he's not. Star Lord is goofy, but they kind of go. They make a point to show that he he's smart. He you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. he's he's ways, goofy, but yeah. he's smart. You know what I mean? Because they do have the aspect of like I, I think I brought this up to you before. Both of the... He is an emotional guy, but I don't think they've ever shown him to be that emotional. Well, both of his victories, right, with cosmic entities in yeah. his solo movies, he won through emotion. That is That, that is, is true. true. But, but I don't no, know. Like I, I said, like I said, he's too competent to be messed does, up something like that. It lines up in that sense, but I think that's probably some shit James Gunn, like, because you know James Gunn, like, consulted on this Yeah. Show. I feel like that's even something James Gunn might have said. Like, well, if you need someone here to ruin this, Star Lord, like, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that falls in line with his shit. He uses his emotion to fight cosmic guys. So put that in. But. I feel like if you had to pick someone there to mess up, I guess it, he's the best one to go with. But I think if you have a footnote there that says they almost very nearly fucking by a hair almost get the glove off. And then it's somehow ruined. They need something there. They could have thought of something better. Yeah. They could have thought of something better. But yeah, Star-Lord, he fucked up. Yeah, and that always bothered me. And it's very stupid, too, because if it was like... I don't know. If there was some way to introduce the fact to him that he killed Gamora before, and then have Star-Lord fly in and start shooting him, or something more quick. Mm -hmm. But the fact that like Tony and... Like, Peter, like, pulling the glow off, and they're like, It's almost off! Stop! Yeah. <laughs> like, they're literally begging him yeah. to stop, and it takes so long. Yeah, it is a bit drawn out. And he's just fucking hitting him in the head. It's, it, if it was quicker, it would be way easier to digest. Yeah. But, um, weren't able to do that, and it's bad. So that's pretty bad. Dude, if I were Tony and I saw him again at Endgame, I would have slapped the shit out of him. But then, is the... Is the oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> they they never, like, follow back up on that at all. Uh, yeah. Which like, they didn't really need to, or... I don't know why they'd even waste the time on it in Endgame, I guess, to follow back up on that. If there was any type of realism, though, yeah. in the universe, he, Iron Man probably would have killed yeah. Peter Quill <laughs> after that. <laughs> well, no, he killed himself because he got dusted, right? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, when he sees him again in Endgame, I'd be, like, I'd be like, bro, this is all your fault. Huh? Guardians get dusted? Yeah, they all did. Oh, okay. Except Rocket. Right. And right. Uh, Nebula. You're right, you're right. But yeah, Infinity War's cool. Infinity yeah. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, but I was wondering, is the Iron Man fight with Thanos after that? Or this is... All that shit is before, or what? They all fight Thanos, and then that happens, and then the one with Iron Man... Cause, and then they get the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, uh-huh. And that was a cool moment. Him and Doctor Strange both get a little one-on-one -on -one with Thanos after that. The, the rest of them all get messed up. Those are both fucking amazing. Because that's why Spider-Man's, like, saving them or whatever. They're all, like, flying through there right. because of that. Right. Yeah. yeah, but the, just real quick also. I've said that probably three times when we haven't stopped talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Infinity War's really good. It is a good movie, yeah. Um, I can tell, too, that this belongs above Winter Soldier because I'm kind of gushing about Infinity War. And I was not gushing about Winter Soldier that much. I agree, I agree. But those two solo fights are fucking awesome. They are, they are. Um, because you finally get to see Doctor Strange. When Doctor Strange does that, like, shot, that, like, shadow clone thing, come on, that was Shadow dope. clone? <laughs> he used shadow clone jutsu, that was awesome. Because this dude used two techniques at once. This dude used the crimson bands of Sidorak, <laughs> and he used the clone jutsu at the same time. That was dope. That's awesome. And, there's a really cool payoff from Doctor Strange movie. Remember the mirror dimension? There's an aspect in Doctor Strange where, basically... It's one of the only things he does besides the yellow tools, the little sparkly yellow mm -hmm. tools. He can turn the world basically into like an like a cheap copy that can't be destroyed. Okay, yes, I do remember this. Dimension. Yeah, I do remember this. Doctor Strange tries to put Thanos in the mirror dimension and Thanos punches it and it explodes. Okay, I do remember that. It yeah, happens yeah. really quick, but that is a great that is, yeah, detail right. and it's like it actually shows some of the power scaling and shit. Just a very quick moment. It's very cool. 
But yeah, Doctor Strange goes ham. Iron Man, of course, goes ham. And it kind of, a, like you were saying, like a different way where he's just like kind of a survivor. He's using every last bit. Like, yeah. This dude, I think there's like a jagged piece of his, of his, uh, of course, it's nanotech. So it's a little different. Oh, kind of like him breaking the mirror dimension is like really cool. At the end of just destroying the nanotech. Oh, like he yeah. can, like, punch him through it like it's nothing. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and he also, um, when it's, like, of course, it's, like, all already getting destroyed towards the end of their fight yeah. together. And I think Iron Man, what does he do? He goes for a stab in the gut, which is, like, Iron Man is not the dude to stab someone yeah. in the gut. Like, that is fucking insane. Um, but it's just crazy. He's doing some jail shit. Like, this is <laughs> Iron Man. He's doing some jail shit. Oh, man. And then we, he just, like, has his arms up, and he's like, I know you. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's great. It's great. Good cursed, movie. Cursed with knowledge. Good movie. I'm cursed with knowledge to know that this is the fourth best MCU movie. The fourth? I think we said third. Third. What? Was it fourth? Fourth. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Ah. So, the next one. What do you think? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do you think for the next one? That's hard. It's hard? Yeah, give me a second. All right. Let's say, let's say it on three. The next one. You okay. got one in mind? Pick one. <laughs> You're not going to agree. Let's see. You're going to say Iron Man. <laughs> 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 okay, well, let's talk about this then, Evan. Let's see. Huh. For my money, Evan... You're going to say Civil War? For my money? Civil War? Is that what you're going to say? For my money, Evan? For my $5 bill? Civil War. What do you think? No. Is Avengers the best one? No. No? Avengers 1's not the best one. Civil War's the best one. That's my number one. Oh, shit. Civil War's a better movie than Avengers. Explain to me in detail why. Explain to you in detail why. Well, shouldn't we talk about the third one first? No. No? Explain to you why. Then shouldn't we just put Avengers as number three then? Because that's neither of our top pick. But Civil War is my third one. But Iron Man is my third one. So we have to fight. Well, what are we necessarily... Like, what are we debating exactly here? Well, since we kind of know our order... Roughly, like our individual order. Let's let's both argue for our top pick. So mine is Iron Man one. Mine is Civil War. Yours is Civil War. Yeah. See, it's interesting too because I would concede Avengers over Iron Man, but that's not what we're. That's not. Yeah. The, that's not the hand we're dealt, Evan. So I guess we're gonna we're gonna have to yell at each other, Evan. What do we oh, got? God. What do we got? Okay. Let me let me pitch you Iron Man one. Let me go first. Okay. Okay. Iron Man. It's good. Yeah, true. It stands on its own more than any movie on this list. That is true. Of any singular movie. Iron Man is characterized well. Is he not? He is. He the is. fantasy, Evan, the fantasy of Iron Man is brought to life. Okay. In full technicolor. Yeah. On the big screen. <laughs> yes. John Favreau is an auteur director. <laughs> Obadiah is good. Obadiah Stane, what's his name? The, the dude? What's Jeff name? Bridges. Jeff Bridges, yeah. Yeah, Jeff Bridges is good. I was almost about to say Jeff Goldblum, but I'm like, that's not Jeff that's Goldblum. Not yeah. No, that's not him. No, honestly, though, I think the movie deserves a lot of credit for making that real. Like, no one was like, Iron Man's cool before this. I mean, I was. A lot of people were like, Iron Man's cool. But... In Not in the, the mainstream, but this, uh, yeah. This movie made kids run around with repulsors. Yeah, I see like what you mean. Like they do for like Batman and Superman. Yeah, it, it put him up there like that. Yeah, yeah, I see what you it mean. It bring that. It bring that. It bring. It bring that <laughs> fantasy to life. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but I think that's really cool to me because a kid can throw up a repulsor blast like a Spider-Man hand now, and it's like you get it. Like, yeah, every kid gets it. Um, and I just. The, the reason I give the movie credit for that is because it made being Iron Man look really fucking fun. Yeah. And I think that's a testament to, like, the action and the suit and the design and all that shit. The action is pretty great in this movie, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Also, the Iron Man origin, like, just throw everything away. You just take the the Jericho, the cave, and the cave escape. That's, like, the coolest thing I've ever seen, in my opinion. Ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the birth of my child, um, <laughs> fucking... We should mention that. <laughs> we should we should mention that Dylan's a father of six. I'm a father of six. Yeah. Which yeah. child is my favorite? I don't know. <laughs> but whichever one is my top one, Iron Man Origin beats it. Yeah. Whichever one's my favorite. So. I liked how Tom Morello was one of the terrorists in the Iron Man one. Is he like a? He's a band guy, right? He's like yeah. He's one of the. Um, what's it called? The Ten Rings people. No, who's it? What is he in? Oh, he's from Rage Against the Machine. Oh, I knew it. Yeah, that's my that's my middle name. <laughs> I want that. That's cool. Yeah, there's someone else silly in there too. John Favreau. Oh, <laughs> let's be nice, okay? Let's be nice. He's silly. No, he's not. He's not silly. Okay. No, who are we talking about? Iron Man. Um, <laughs> is that your bitch? Um, yo, what else do I got to say about Iron Man? That's good. Iron Man's cool. Iron Man's good. Uh, he's a not so uh, good guy. He turns into a not so bad guy. Yeah, you know. I do like it's very organic. On a serious note, okay. Sorry, I'm talking like a fucking idiot. On a serious note, Evan, I think it's clever the way. I don't even know if they do this in the comics. If this is how his origin plays mm-hmm. out, but it's, I guess, still credit to how it plays out in the movie. I like how he has a very distinct superhero origin and a very distinct goal in that he's well first of all he has to survive and escape that's the impetus for the first iron man suit but the reason he upgrades and continues with it is that he needs to go get all his guns out of the hands of these terrorists that you know he doesn't know but his business partner is selling it to yeah him. and then he has to kill his business partner viciously so I feel like it's a very organic reason for him to keep being a superhero. Because even though something like Batman Begins is a great movie, but it's like, where did where the fuck did you get an idea to go beat people up? I don't know. I don't know where he got that idea. I know. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah but it's very organic in Iron Man 1. And Robert Downey Jr. is good. He is good. He's fine. He's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I might not think this is his best performance at Tony... So, Inf- you fucking sold me on Infinity War. <laughs> he was good in that. Yeah. He's pretty good in that one. I actually wasn't... don't think he's great in Civil War. I think he's okay. I I was about to say I think he's pretty good in Civil War. He's not. He's not his best. I think he's better in Avengers and uh, Infinity War than he is in Civil War. But yeah. he was good in uh, Civil War. Iron Man one. Guess what? Real Iron Man. No, I was about to say, like as far as like technical filmmaking goes, Iron Man one maybe it should be like at the top. It's the but we're ranking MCU movies, and for that reason, you're right. We're not ranking it as like, oh, this is a great film, Martin Scorsese. No, I think Iron as Man, much as I want to do that, I'm not going to. I think that's another point for it, Evan. As far as of ranking the MCU movies go, this is the reason why I say Civil War is the best one. Go ahead, because I feel like it just all the stuff you like from an MCU movie, it just kind of takes all of that and just puts it in one single movie. And throw some fan service on top of it, and there you go. Fan service, like superhero fighting each other. Okay, come on, we all want to see that. Let's, let's figure, there's a reason that those stupid versus battle forums exist. Okay. Yeah. There's a reason death battle exists because it's the bullshit we want to see. Okay. If you're looking at it like you know, like Scorsese said that these are theme park movies, Civil War is about as good as it gets. About. About as good as it gets. Yeah, maybe close, but. Well, Iron Man's not a theme park movie. No, but I do have... I was going to add on what you were saying. Iron Man's not a theme park movie. I was talking about Avengers. Avengers 1? Yeah. Maybe. Anyways. Anyways. But no, I have something to add on what you were saying. Yes, yes, okay? yes. I'm okay. on your side this okay. time. What you're saying about Civil War, it's like a good Avengers movie with the... At, you get to tack on the fact that it's like on both sides. There's no bland villain. It's all superheroes that you already like yeah. and are characterized already. There's that added benefit of, like, the antagonist is already someone you know and like. Like, it's a really, really valuable thing to have yeah. in, like, a franchise, um, like, filmmaking and shit like That's that. That's you know? something that always works in favor of comic book movies, which you have in Civil War, unlike Iron Man, which, you know, 
In Iron Man 1, you have to do a lot of setup. That's not a bad thing, necessarily. But, you know, for comic book movies, you kind of usually like to just get into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is always a point in favor of sequels for mm -hmm. these movies. And in Civil War, you just kind of get right into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, Civil War is one of the only movies, I think, in the MCU where we see the Avengers just doing their thing. You know what I mean? Civil Whereas, War. Yeah, where it's not like... It's like what you might see the Avengers doing on it every day. Like in a cold open of a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. which Civil War has in the beginning. Which is, I love that scene so much at the beginning of Civil I think, War. I think Civil War, because like, Avengers Age of Ultron has that exact thing you're talking about. But in Age of Ultron, it reads like, this wouldn't happen. Like, you're just doing this to set up the quick group shot. Yeah. Like in the woods. But this feels like, oh, the Avengers are out there doing a mission. Like, not everyone's fucking there. Yeah, you exactly. Yeah, because yeah. like you said, in Age of Ultron... You got, like, Hulk, Thor, everybody. It doesn't really make that much sense. Yeah, like, if you have Hulk and Thor there, why the fuck is Hawkeye and Black Widow there? Yeah. Like, you need to, like... They just did it for the group shot, like you said. Choose teams wisely. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Or they're gonna take Hawkeye hostage, mm -hmm. like they try to do in fucking Age of Ultron. But. And then, yeah, so, at the beginning of Civil War, you just got a select group of A pretty people. realistic group for that mission. Yeah. You know? And that was really cool. And then... The way they use it to set up the rest of the plot of the movie with Wanda destroying the building and everything. Yeah. It was cool. It made sense for, like, creating that divide between the heroes. Yeah. So, I like that a lot. And, of course, it's, bet like, Civil War is one of the times, I mean, it's one of the few times where you get a really good adaptation, you know? Like, it's a, in the MCU especially... They fuck up a lot of adaptations. Yeah. And... I don't know too much about the Civil War comics, so I can't really speak to this. Well, I mean, you just... Because like we were saying about like Iron Man 3 earlier. Like, yeah. You don't get the extremist story, and you don't get the Mandarin. You get yeah. neither. But you, you get both, but you get neither. Yeah. In Civil War, it's... The fun of that story is translated perfectly into the movie. Yeah. Um, plus there's maybe even a little more substance in the movie. Um, and plus they, they do a good job of just condensing shit down. Like in, in Civil War, the comic, there's every superhero ever in it. It's hard to track. Neither side is the good guy, but not in a, not in a really concise way or anything. It's just kind of up in the air. It's very long. This movie condenses everything down. You make a core Avenger, the, the person that cause the atrocity that kind of kicks in the whole yeah the whole civil war kind of fight and the and the new laws and stuff i don't know they do a, they do a great job of condensing that fucking that story is way too thick in the comics they, they do a fantastic job of like condensing down all the cool stuff about that story yeah the two hours and i think after because of this you end up getting like Civil War gives you really a chance to see a lot of really cool character moments between all of them yes. that you aren't going to see otherwise. You know what I mean? Like, it starts setting up the Wanda and Vision stuff, for example. Yeah. And it just has those little moments in it. It's just between not. them. It's not yeah, but it's like so great. And then um, you get the stuff with like I know you don't like Ant Man, but like Ant Man like meeting them. Uh, I kind of like yeah, I liked that. I like um. Because it made sense for who he is, Scott Lang. He's not, he's not on the caliber of like he almost has superhero like, uh, or anything. He was like, he was a criminal before this. You know what I mean? He almost has like imposter syndrome. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like he doesn't feel like he's a superhero. Yeah, he, he still feels like he's kind of a thief, that just like he gets to work for Captain America. Yeah, I like that scene a lot where he kind of starstruck, I guess, by everybody. Because yeah. it doesn't the... it, like it doesn't feel like how it does for like. MCU Spider-Man where it feels fanboyish, you know what I mean? Yeah. It feels like like a normal person who is like completely at, you know out of this world. Yeah, meeting it's even, people. It's like even less serious than like Coulson. Yeah. So I guess even if that I don't know if that I don't remember if that was fake completely or not. I think well, that's an Agents of Shield thing, actually. Yeah. But basically like, you know, Coulson had like the cars and he's like, Oh, Captain America, you're awesome. Like Scott Lang, you get the impression it's like he just saw him probably on the news. Yeah, like, you know. Oh what shit, I mean? you're famous. Like, yeah, that's so cool. 
Pretty much, yeah. yeah I like really, that a lot. It's not like, yeah, like Spider-Man where he's like, I want to be you. <laughs> like, so fucking bad. Exactly. Like, everyone's everyone's characterized very distinctly. And they, even for the small amount of that, that most of them get of screen time. Yeah. And then those character moment thing, it carries over into the airport fight. Like, you're never going to see Ant-Man and Black Widow really ever interact with each other. But you get that little moment where they kind of scuffle uh, with each other. Have you seen that game? Okay, well, you know what I mean. Well, they do, but as a good example of what you're talking about is Hawkeye fighting Vision. Yeah, okay, there you go. Moment. Yeah. Yeah. And plus you get to have, like, um, Scarlet Witch's boyfriend and her daddy fight. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's pretty funny. But it's just cool to see him, like... It's almost, it's literally almost like Thanos fighting Iron Man, that fight. Hawkeye fighting Yeah. Vision. It's just like he's doing every little last thing to buy himself a second more of time, uh, which is really cool. And that whole airport fight is just, in my opinion, it's like the best fight in the MCU. Yeah, I don't know about that. I like it a lot. It was cool. Oh, yeah. N- another little character moment um, where Hawkeye like introduces himself to Black Panther. Yeah. And he's just like, I don't care. <laughs> that, that, that was great. That was oh, great. Oh, no. Okay. So that's one thing I did want to talk about that the movie does fucking really it's just insane it's a great setup movie i mean it does all that and then it does great setups for spider-man and black panther it kind of does what age of ultron wishes it could do yeah on its greatest on its greatest sunday night church session it would pray for this for hours (laughs) age of ultron wishes it could be this movie but yeah black panther because black panther is we talked about this before but Black Panther is very plot relevant, Mm -hmm. completely um, plot relevant in like, uh, he's kind of the main impetus. Like if the, the first act has like a, a crazy moment, which is like the accidental explosion that Scarlet Witch causes the set, the moment for that in the second act is the death of his dad, Charles dad. Yeah. Which of course makes him integral for the rest of the movie. And he's also kind of, he almost feels like. I, this is weird. I don't know how to phrase this, but he almost feels like the main character for a second at the end. Yeah. To me. Which, I really love that. Which is another really good thing. Like, this movie actually does have good writing. Because it actually comes full circle with the themes in it. Yeah. There's the themes about kind of... I don't know about necessarily getting over the past. But, you know, just kind of forgiving yeah. each other for the wrongs. Because the big point of this movie is that... Obviously, these superheroes aren't perfect. We're looking... Basically, they've done a lot of messed up shit while trying to do what they do. Yeah. That's, like, the point of conflict in this movie anyways. I mean, Captain America's kind of... His point is, uh, we need to... uh, The safest hands are still our own, he says. Iron Man's point is, um, you know, we need to be held accountable. Yeah, but then I just feel like there's a theme of not being able to let go... Of what happened, oh, well, then, or just holding it against you, well, specifically, holding against other people. Yeah, specifically. That's a, a big thing in this movie. Is mad about um, the Winter Soldier killed his mom and dad. Yeah, that's what he's mad about. He can't go over it. Which that's weird. The lady's mad at Tony. That's something you know. There's just a lot of themes of, like, there's forgiveness seems to be a big thing, or not being able to yeah. let go of what happened to you or whatever. Stuff with, with T'Challa, with Barra and Zemo. I would say even Bucky to a degree. Well, I mean, yeah, not even to a degree. Yeah, he just fits. Right? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, you don't really see, like, the people he's angry at that much in it. Oh, well, I just mean you know in the I mean? sense that he's the... Well, of course... For Tony, for Tony. Yeah. Tony's upset with Bucky, yeah. But I just mean, um, I'm saying, like... I mean, Bucky clearly upset still about well how he was wronged. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the theming, even if it's not like, of course there's fucking... I guess what I should just say is there's a lot of points of conflict between the characters outside of the main conflict. Yeah. As it makes it even worse, it, it kind of exasperates the whole problem that they're dealing with yeah is that because they can't get over these little personal issues yeah yeah i don't know if i should say you know murdering someone's parents is a little personal issue but you get what i mean yeah but once you once you kind of really dial that back and you look at it it's like it is kind of petty yeah what iron man his reaction and everything but like you said or zemo 
going through all this. I mean, it's obviously clearly messed well, up that his family died. No, nah, yeah. I think Zemo is what a million times more justified. Oh no, I agree. Than Tony. Yeah, because Bucky was brainwashed. Yeah. Whereas the hero clearly knew what they were doing. No, when... no, no. Because Iron Man, like, I mean, and this is just they do a good job repurposing Age of Ultron in this movie. Yes, they, they do. do a really good yeah. job of that because ultimately, and also the lady that we meet in the beginning of the movie that's like. Well, you fucking dropped the house on my son. Yeah. And a lot of that shit, a lot of that shit can sometimes feel, when you, sorry, let me dial it back a little bit. In superhero movies, when they try and hold the heroes accountable for their actions, it's like, well, the building was going to fall down because the robots were evaporating everyone. Yeah. it Like, the superheroes didn't really, it was either that one building fell down or all the buildings. Like, yes. You don't really have a choice. But, in the case of Age of Ultron, of course, all of that shit is Tony's fault. Every single death in Age of Ultron is exactly, specifically at Tony's hands. <laughs> you have a good point. And they don't really reference it in the way you're saying right now. They blame it on him because, like, oh, they were killing robots in the city. But it's actually literally his fault because of Ultron. It might as well have been an Iron Man yeah. suit dropping the city. Yeah. Um they don't go that far. I, in Civil War, they don't go that far, though, but I to blame you, it on him that If you one. watch Age of Ultron, though, and then you watch this, I feel like you kind of... Yeah. You, you can get it close enough, even though they don't verbatim say yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I think, in that sense, Zemo is a million times more uh, justified. Like, if I was Zemo, I'd be like, yeah, Iron Man is a fucking menace to the world. <laughs> like, he definitely needs to fucking die. Yeah, I agree. But you see what I'm saying, though, yeah. is that it's another thing, like, where... A point of contention in the movie is something that happened in the past. Yeah, yeah. And not being able to let go of that. Yeah, yeah. Or forgive the person who caused you that much pain or whatever. Because there isn't... I don't know. I couldn't really pinpoint a specific kind of... Um, because, of course, that's, yeah. that's the theme. Or maybe not even the... Th yeah, the theme, right? It's one of the themes in the movie. I feel like it's pretty much just like... A conflict and like... The past and forgiveness. Yeah. Right? But... We kind of see, like, the characters who aren't willing to forgive for the past, it doesn't end up working out for them, really. Yes. Zemo and Tony. So I wanted to say, too, is that it's kind of hard to pinpoint... Because um, that's the theme, of course, but it's kind of hard to pinpoint an exact moral. I guess the moral would be, you know, fucking forgive people. Yeah. But... Maybe it's consequences... Maybe it's consequence. I think maybe specifically it could be consequences more because I really like the line. Probably my favorite part. I mean, there's cool shit that happens throughout the whole mm -hmm. movie. There's a lot of cool shit. But my favorite like line and like exchange between two characters yeah. is when um, Black Panther stops Zemo from killing himself. That's fucking awesome. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And that's that's kind of the where it comes full circle yeah. for me. Because it's a moment for both of them where Zemo... He's still not willing to let go of this. But then Black Panther, he he forgives Bucky. He's like, do you see what happens when we don't let go of and this I, shit? It just gets completely I worse. It's really cool that literally Black Panther is right above them. He fucking, what was he doing? He was Toy Story 2 standing on the landing gear of the plane. Yeah, uh -huh. the plane. This dude was stalking them like shit <laughs> trying to kill Bucky. And this dude realized like... You know, Zemo's outside, he's escaped, they're fighting inside, and he realized they just got This played. is not worth it at and all. And T'Challa's just like, yeah, like, holy shit, I'm above this. Like, you're going to jail. Yeah. Like, oh man, that part is so fucking cool. And he's like, what does he say? He's like, oh, I don't know, something has torn them apart. I won't, oh, wait, wait, vengeance? Like, vengeance has driven them too far or some shit like that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Black Panther is just fucking awesome. Because you, of course, you have these characters, like... The Captain America and Iron Man. It's almost like Black Panther's like the narrator. Or like some type of like like uh, through line that's kind of highlighting yeah. the conflict. I don't know. It's pretty clever, I think. I agree. I agree. And it's a great fucking introduction for Black Panther. Yeah. And uh, we didn't even mention Spider-Man. We can talk about this shit. I'm going to say, the thing, Spider-Man, he's not nearly integrated into the main story of the movie as well as Black Panther is. Yeah. But for what it is... It's a fun introduction to the character. It's a good way to just skip having to do his origin again. I think what you do with Black Panther here earns you a Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, you make Black Panther is, like, pretty 
fucking perfectly integrated into the story. And it's like, well, we'll throw you fucking Spider Man. Yeah. Like, you'll get it. Like, we'll throw you a bone. Like, you get a little extra. Spider Man was great in this. Uh, could we see him actually, you know, have Spider Man powers? Unlike, uh, not, like I would say, I'm not going to say he doesn't have it in, uh, Far, far from home and uh, homecoming. Well, he doesn't. But he seems like he's actually like as strong as Spider Man should be. Um, he has Spider Sense. You know what I mean? He his whole role in that fight was awesome. He acts more like Spider Man too. Yeah. Because he's um, still... to a degree, he's still a bit too Tom Holland goofy ish. No, I don't think I don't agree with that. And and you already know I like the first time I saw Civil War, the whole walking thingies. The first time, I swear to God, That's the first bad. time I saw it, that pissed me off. I was That's like, what I mean. That's bad. Spider-Man doesn't even like Star Wars. He likes Star Trek. Like... I don't even... That's not even like a canon thing, but it's like Spider-Man... No, he would pick something that's more... Yeah. He doesn't... Nerdy, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, more like, cerebral. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's fucking... I don't know, man. But no, I, I am right there with Disney you. Disney doesn't own Star Trek, though. Yeah. So whatever. But... Not only that, but he's talking like a fucking eight-year-old. It's, this is exactly what I mean. That's why I don't like it. it but, right. but, but as far as just being Spider Man, like, obviously he doesn't quip like Spider Man does or anything. He catches a little break for me just because this is his first appearance. Yeah, he's supposed to be fifteen. Like, he shouldn't say walking thingies. That is fucking god. That pisses me off. Yeah, I'm bad. Like, Joe and Anthony Russo were looking up Tumblr posts or something. <laughs> be like, what do kids talk about? No, no. But I think he's he's competent still. Yes. He's um and like you said, he's strong. He's fucking Spider Man, he's cool. He shouldn't be British. I like that slide. <laughs> For this movie it's okay. It works. Yeah. I like his intro scene, even though of course, you know, homecoming would come along. Oh, and No, are you still gonna say something about Spider Man still? Yeah. Basically, yeah, I was just saying, like, um, even though we know Homecoming's coming, I feel like Iron Man could have really worked just in this movie as kind of an intro to Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, just... Ah, they really fucked They up. didn't need to carry over his relationship with Tony past this. Yeah, but people I agree. just really like that yeah. relationship, that non-relationship. It was fine for when they first met. Yeah. It became worse later on. Yeah. So, that's not a point against Civil War, I don't think. So I like that his int- his introduction in New York, quick fast to get over his origin real quick, where he's like, yeah, I just made these myself, like the web shooters or whatever. You get the does he actually say you've been by a spider? I don't think so, but everybody knows this at this point. I think he was about to start telling him, and then like Tony's like, oh, did you make these? Okay, yeah, yeah. And then so and you and all uh, yeah, and also you give him the. With great power comes great responsibility thing, except it's way worse. But yeah, the terrible walking thingy yeah. version of the of the responsibility thing. The point is that they sum up his origin really quick yeah. in just that one scene when he, he meets Tony and it does in his feel apartment. Like, it does feel like Iron Man kind of walking, except for the fact... There's one thing I kind of don't like about Robert Downey Jr. is the fucking t-shirts. Oh. Because <laughs> it kind of... I was going to say that scene really feels like Tony Stark walking into Peter Parker's, like a kid Peter Parker's yeah. room, except for the fact that Fucking wear a dress shirt. Robert what is he Daniels. wearing in that scene? Probably like a pizza t-shirt or something. A pizza t-shirt. Yeah. Pizza time? Pizza time? Pizza time? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? I did say it was like, oh, Civil War is like the theme park to its fullest. But, you know what? I'll walk that back. I feel like Civil War walks that fine line between trying to be serious and being like completely goofy. Mm. Just a crazy comic book movie. Like really well. I think the best part about that... Because I feel like the forgiveness thing, that's actually a pretty good message to have in a movie. I think the, the best part about that, if I can compare it to what we were talking about, Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Winter Soldier... That's what I was trying to say before. Basically, I feel like... Civil War doesn't lean one... like It goes more goofy than Winter Soldier, but it doesn't go too far. I think the difference is... Winter Soldier doesn't have the substance to back it up. So, yeah, because what is Winter Soldier really trying to say? The government's bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But which is in Civil War a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's more like it's more like oh, this red tape and yeah, ah, uh, jeez. 
No, but okay, Winter Soldier, it doesn't have the substance to back up its kind of mood. Yeah. But Civil War, it it has that balance where it's like silly, it's kind of serious, mostly silly. But then when it wants to be serious, it always has that backbone. Yeah. It always has that 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 substance whereas Winter Soldier is And like, I feel like having doesn't. like you know, focusing on a theme where everybody can relate to other than just the government being bad. You know what I mean? Like a general theme, like forgiveness and getting over the past. Yeah, they it works. Could've, yeah, could have made um, Winter Soldier. Like I'm fucking. I'm not a genius. Okay, I'm sorry. Me either. Clearly, <laughs> you see the way I talk about these movies. I, I would never have made Winter Soldier better than it is. Yeah, but I'm just saying with the benefit of like what fucking six years of hindsight. Yeah. Um, Winter Soldier could have been better, maybe because like you were saying, the theme of Civil War, you can apply that kind of theme or message or feeling to any character ever and it and it, you can make it work and they pick some specific ways to make it work with these characters yeah and then in winter soldier like all of these characters are soldiers do something with that have that be the backbone no <laughs> like i don't know like a soldier's guilt or fucking like uh, like survivor's guilt or fucking um like just bravery in general or something yeah but there's not really like like we were talking about it's pretty much just the government lies to you. They're actually Nazis. Yeah. The governments are the governments are secret Nazis. Yes. There's not much for the characters to. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Civil War still dog shit. Iron Man's back. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. How, you how, lose. How do we agree? How do we agree on this? Let's say. All I'll say is that our conversation on Civil War was much longer than it was on Iron Man. Cause there's fucking a lot going on. But to be fair, I didn't have much to say about Iron Man because like, it's been so long since I've seen it, which may be a point against me on trying to rank these. But I think to be fair, Iron Man is cool and Civil War sucks. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. See, he agree. I win. Yes. Okay. Um. Do we agree that Avengers should be number three? No. I'm gonna make a pitch. We're we're already a long time into this podcast. So I'm gonna I, make I feel it, like let me make a pitch to end it. Yes. Let me make a pitch to end. Okay. Iron Man. Wait. Wait. Avengers is actually number one. <laughs> That's Iron, yes, that was the pitch. <laughs> that was the pitch. Deal? Iron Man's number three, Civil War's number two, Iron Man's number one. Avengers number one. You're willing to concede on Iron Man? Iron Man number three, Civil War two, Avengers one. Well, we both had Avengers in our top two, right? Yes. That's almost like maybe it should be number one. Because Avengers, even though Iron Man laid the groundwork for everything, Avengers really laid the groundwork for the rest of it. <laughs> for everything that was to come in superhero movies, not just in the MCU after this. Iron Man laid the groundwork in terms of like having the MCU. Yeah. But Avengers laid the groundwork in terms of like the MCU. Yeah. Everything that was going to come after this, yes. Well, Avengers... Just having characters interact with each other from different franchises and everything. Yeah, all and Iron now you Man see it all the time now, and now it's nothing to us. But at the time, that was like uh, Avenger Phone was a big deal. Oh yeah, which is weird because now it feels like a smaller movie. It feels because like a of, very quaint movie. Now. Yeah, because what was to come. But if it weren't for Avenger One, we wouldn't be having any of that. It's crazy how fuck Avengers was on some like Batman eighty nine shit, like where you don't know about that. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, it was just like a huge fad. Type yeah, thing, where there's like fake T shirts everywhere and shit. Avengers was the same thing where it was like, I don't know, friends were lying to friends about seeing it at midnight and, <laughs> and, and, and real D three D and all this, you know, it was crazy. Shout out to you, Andy. It was crazy. But yeah, I love Avengers and um, Avengers. And it's also, so much fun. It's so much fun, and it also has like, of course, it's not. I want to say Civil War's deep. Maybe you're right about the theme park thing for Avengers one. Yeah. Because, like, it's not really trying to say anything at all. It's just, like... Civil War is a little more... Even though there's silly shit in it... Yeah. And, and you get the sense that when there's, like, big airport fight with heroes versus heroes, you get the sense that none of them are trying to kill each other. Yeah. But there's still a sense of, like, this is pretty... Kind of dark for everyone involved. Like, yeah. Like, no one really wants to be here doing this. But in Avengers, there's still the stakes and there's still, like, the heroism and shit, but it's like, we're blasting aliens. Yes. Bro, we're fucking uh -huh. killing these you're guys. just getting the Avengers kicking ass. Yes. And which is also awesome. Still, there's a pretty good little 
story in Avengers, even though it's pretty simple, like, oh, we're going to fight the aliens, but there's the whole, like... But you don't need to, for this first time, for having this, you don't need to do something, the like, too crazy. Will carry it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Avengers is awesome. Which is why, in a weird way, I feel like that's why people don't give it as much credit now. Yeah. Because of that. But that's the thing. You have to realize, at the time, it was a novel thing. Yeah, very. So they couldn't go, like, too crazy with it. No, no. But yeah. I think I think Joss Whedon or whoever the fuck wrote it or whatever, I think they got away with a pretty good amount of like like the whole thing of like the conflict between the heroes is well done, even though it's kinda of small. But I mean you get to see you get to see Cap one on one Loki. You get to see um kind of them have a little fight about where Loki's gonna be contained and shit yeah. Thor comes down. Um I mean Loki's great. That's Loki my favorite in it, yeah. Loki in anything. I agree, yeah. yeah awesome. Hulk and Iron Man are both amazing in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah. Iron Man's great. I like when he... Does... That scene when he goes into the portal the new... and tries to talk to Pepper. That was yeah, really cool. I like awesome. that scene a lot, yeah. I like... Uh... I like when Iron Man's... Or when he saves Cap's ass. What part? With um Loki. Oh, yeah. He just busts in at the... Yeah. When Cap's like fighting him at the... Like, the... After he, like, uh, ice cream scoops the guy's eye out, right? Is that what he did? Yeah, he went to, like, some opera, and he, like, uh, ice cream soup, scoops him. Yeah, they're out. fighting there, Captain America. And the Iron Man comes and just kicks ass, which is awesome. I don't think he saves him, though, does he? I thought he did. Well, the point is that he comes in and starts doing his thing. Yeah. He steals the shine away from Captain America. I like, yeah, well, because he comes in fucking, like, the Quinjet, I guess, or whatever it is. It's, like, blaring ACDs. So yeah. He fucking drops that yes, uh -huh, that was awesome. Yeah, so Avengers number one? Avengers the best Seems one. good to me. Avengers and number then one. We can have Iron Man 1 and Civil War tie. Boom. Two to three interchangeably. Boom. Because I feel like they're both... They're different. Iron Man 1, it laid another movie like Avengers 1 that laid a groundwork for everything. And then Civil War, I feel like it's just a really good like peak for everything that we've been talking about. I would say... But yeah, I would say though, Avengers 1, especially for the time... Or maybe not even for the time, but just in context. It's the best, like, people love culmination. Culmination is yeah. it's the best culmination. It's the best kind of, you get the the best of every character. Yeah. Um, Civil War, it's messier. That would be my pitch for why Avengers is maybe a little better than Civil War. Avengers... Is very clean. There is not a single. I feel like you could start with Avengers one and still pretty much get it. Yeah. Like, even without the Civil War has too much baggage. Civil War has a ton of baggage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're introducing characters. They're they're fucking like paying off shit, showing new introductions that you might not even understand. Yeah. Shit. Or like not even introductions, like character interactions that you might not even understand. Um, there's the whole thing with like Bucky killed the parents and all that. Mm -hmm. Ton of baggage in Civil War. Yeah. But, uh... Avengers, Avengers is straightforward. Very clean. Very clean intro for every single character. And then the great character interactions after. It's very... It's, like, very self-contained. Yeah. Even though it's, like, a great team-up movie. That's actually a good point, too, for... Kind of, like, our whole list was supposed to be, like, Oh, like, is it... You know, based on the solo movies, but we can't help but compare it to the other movies. Avengers, I think, is the best, like, team-up or anything... And also it stands on its own. And also it stands on its own very well. Yeah. Yeah. I was not expecting this ending. I was not expecting this at all. Well, there you go. So, should we read off our list from top to bottom now? Let's, let's, uh, let's take a look here. Let everyone know. So, number one, we have Avengers 1. What a shock. What a shock. <laughs> two to three tied. We'll say two and three tied. Civil War and Iron Man. Civil War Iron Man. So number four will Iron be... Iron Man Civil War. Okay, yes. Either way, either way. They're tied for two and three. Um, then Infinity War. Infinity War. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, boo. And then you're going to have to read off the rest because you have it written I down. I think I was keeping them in order, right? right? So then Captain America 1 just barely out of the top six. Mm -hmm. Top five. Or just barely, yeah. Okay. okay, just barely out of top five. Captain America... Guardians, the first Guardians, Thor, the first Thor, right? Mm -hmm. Black Panther, which I didn't expect that 
You did convince me it does deserve it, but I didn't expect us to put it that high. Me either. I Good was not Black either. Panther. I was not either. Good for Black Panther. I had to look at everything to, to realize <laughs> that actually it is higher than I thought. Uh, then after Black Panther, we got Guardians 2. We're pretty good talk on that one. Yeah. Right? Iron Man 3. Thank you, Evan, for letting me put that that high. Ant-Man. Okay. You did sell me on Iron Man 3. I'm like, you know what? It does have enough have behind it yeah, yeah. To, to, to be a, a little bad. bit higher. I don't like it, but it's okay. A little vanilla Coke armor? <laughs> yeah. I like that movie. Ant-Man. You know, I feel like, honestly, Ant-Man is... Almost perfectly where it should be. Right in the middle. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Ant-Man. Um, Thor 3, you know, personally I'd put it a little higher, but I think, I honestly think the list is curated pretty well. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, at some points it does look a little strange um, for what, what I'm just used to thinking of the MCU in my head of like the order, but I feel like it's pretty accurate actually. Um, Ant-Man and Thor 3, Thor 2. Age of Ultron, Iron Man 2, these are making a lot of sense, um, <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp, Hulk, Doctor Strange, and the very worst ones, we talked about, god damn, we talked about these two hours ago, Black Widow, Captain Marvel, uh, Homecoming, Endgame, and Far From Home. Evan, All 27 MCU movies ranked, there you go. 27? 27, right? There's no way it's 27. It's like, uh, 2, 3... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14. Did I count that right? No, I didn't. Whatever. However many movies it is. Perfect. Right. Perfect. There you go. Evan, can I ask you one question before we go? Yeah. I always like to tack on one more question that we need. Understandable. Real quick. Mm-hmm. If there's one thing that you take umbrage with the most on this list, that you feel it's wrong, Evan... What is it? What would you choose? Hmm. I'll show you the list here. It does seem pretty accurate to me, like you were saying. Maybe. Thor two. I feel like maybe I would move up. Like just personally, I might move up Thor two. Okay, that's fair. People are going to think I'm stupid, but whatever. Excuse me, excuse me. I guess for me, something, something more in line with yours where it's a very personal choice. Hmm. Honestly, Iron Man 3 is where it belongs, more or less. Because um, I can acknowledge like that's not really better than Black Panther, probably. Yeah. It's kind of just a solo movie that I kind of just like the style of and stuff, stuff like that. Um, no. Yeah, I would put Thor 2 above Ragnarok, probably, because like, I've already... That makes sense. Two hours ago, I talked about what I didn't <laughs> like in Ragnarok. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess it would be something simple for me, like putting... Um, I'd move Age of Ultron above Thor 2. I'd move it up like one place or something. But uh, actually, to be honest, to be honest, this is pretty heavy. I'm sorry. Okay. Homecoming, I'd probably take out of the bottom. Far from, uh, far from home can stay. Everything else can stay. I'd probably put Homecoming uh, above Thor 2. I'd put it above Thor 2. I'm sorry. Really? I'm sorry. Homecoming is bad. Thor 2 is boring. It's boring, but I don't know. Homecoming is bad, but it's not bad where it's like, oh, this is so bad, it's enjoyable. You know, like, Ma. It does. Homecoming it's just bad where Ma. Ma's a great movie that's bad that's fun. What is it? Spider-Man 1 alone? What's her name? Um, oh, what is her name? I don't know. I can't remember, but... I'm sorry, I poisoned the podcast. I like you, Ma. You're a good actress. I like you, Ma, too. Okay. Um, but just... Wait, what was I saying? Just real quick, Homecoming. We're losing our fucking uh, juices. We're already... We're, at, we're three hours into this. I've been running on empty. I've been up all day. Yeah. I've been up all night. Time to wrap this up, Dylan. No, there's one more thing. Homecoming. Oh, okay. No. What was I going to say? I feel like Homecoming for you is like, it's definitely not the, it's not boring. There's some interesting choices. There's some like cool little toy box type shit in there. But it's just like the, the, kind of the mischaracterization in your eyes, like ruins any goodwill for that movie, right? There is that, yeah. I feel like that's a huge part of it. But I don't know. I just feel like 
it's just bad to me. A lot of the like, it's not. It tries so hard to be funny. Oh, it's not funny whatsoever. There's the first time I watched it, I was, um, I was young and naive. To say. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny, but I think it was just like, oh, like it's weird to see this in an MCU movie. I guess this type of humor. But once I really thought about it, it's um, very manufactured. Manufactured kind of tumblery, like awkward humor. Yeah, Very that's what I mean. I don't like the, the humor. Yeah. You know what? Homecoming belongs in the shit can where it is. <laughs> so, thank you for watching our MC ranking. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you.